Hey everybody, welcome to the Growing with Fishes podcast. I'm Steve. I'm Marty. I'm Michael. And this is the uh, Growing with Fishes podcast. Uh, we try to do it every week. Um, we had a little bit of a summer hiatus there for the last couple of weeks. I had some traveling and uh, we had some other things come up uh, schedule-wise, so I apologize for that. Uh, we have a really amazing guest today, a gentleman who's done a whole lot to help a whole lot of people, both on the activist front, as well as physically taking action and, and helping people himself. And uh, he's got a lot to share, and we're really thankful to have him on the show. And, um, you know, you guys can Google him after the show. He's done a lot of different great things for the community, and I really wanted to, uh, you know, really am thankful he took the time to join us today. Um, I've been uh, doing some work down here in San Diego. There's a place called 151 Farms. Um, they have a pretty nice uh, little aquaponic cannabis grow down here. Uh, we've been doing some, uh, doing some stuff with them. Hey, what's up, bud? You want to go ahead and introduce yourself since you joined us a couple of minutes late? Oh, okay, we'll do introductions with him in a second. Um, I've been down here doing some work with them. I actually have some video that I took today. I'm going to post up so you guys can see some video of some flower and veg stuff down here. And um, I'll do some video of the, the fish tanks and stuff. And that's been kind of fun. Um, did some work, went to a couple um, activist things down here to get I'm at 64, which is how uh, I met Mike here. Um, and uh, did some talks with that stuff. So that's been, that's been good. Um, definitely vote no on that. We'll, we'll get into that. Um, later on, so um, that's pretty much what I've had to, aside from traveling. Uh, Marty, you want to go ahead and talk about what you made up to? Uh, yeah, so um, actually, I don't remember exactly where we were last time we had a podcast, but um, I uh, finished cutting down the indoor, obviously, post a couple of videos of that, and because uh, the outdoor started flowering, so I don't have enough to cover both, like either flower indoor or out, so. Uh, so the outdoors, you know, flowering along pretty good now, stacking up, just fighting the usual outdoor bugs and, um, yeah, plugging right along. Um, not really too much else going on, taking care of business, you know, it's that time of year, a lot of shit going on. You want to introduce yourself there, boss? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm aquaponic dummy. Um, uh, sorry about earlier I had a uh, audio technical difficulties um, but I have a garden here and six plants in here and uh, I'm running AK-48 at the moment experiment with uh, some hormones uh, so we'll see what happens but uh, uh, you probably see me on Facebook on the whoever's listening in on the aquaponic cannabis growing channel or group there on Facebook this is the first time uh, I'm on here with Marty. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? I'm all right. Do you want to uh, do you want to mention you had a giveaway you wanted to do today? Oh, I was uh, I was thinking about doing a giveaway here. Uh, I got some. Actually, at first I was thinking about uh, this Hannah Instruments. This is the uh, the iron. I forget the number. This H I something. H I seven. I got some. Actually. Uh, but uh, instead of that, I think what I'll do is I'll wait to give that one away for one of the uh, uh, the next podcast, possibly, or the next giveaway on, on your podcast. Uh, today, I was thinking about giving away, uh, there's a set, these are fort size, big grow, big bloom, and uh, uh, tiger bloom here from Fox Farm. And uh, I know it's uh, kind of weird. Uh, aquaponic grow, or what the hell? I got a bunch of uh, liquid goods. I don't like to keep on the gels more than about six months. So, good. This channel is a great place to get away. Thanks. Uh, I didn't know how you guys wanted to handle it. Yeah. I I'd leave that up to you guys. I figure we give it away to somebody that's watching live and try to get more people watching live. So at the end of the show, we'll, we'll give it away. But yeah, that reminds me I should bring up the live thing. I always forget to see if anybody's in the chat. Yeah, I got it open, so. Oh, that's good. Somebody um, remembered. Michael, you want to go ahead and tell us uh, about you and your story and what you've been up to lately and just 
you know, all the awesome things you've, you've done and, and stuff like that with the yeah. oil. Yeah. Yeah. I make oil and, um, you know, we met, uh, what was it last week yep. down in, uh, San Diego at Balboa park at the, uh, just kind of a, a reading, really, of the uh, Prop 64 proposal that uh, is coming up for the fall in California, and that's you know another legalized uh, routine. You know, we can get into that, but uh, you know, I was glad that we met, and uh, seems like we're we're like-minded people here. Uh, you know, I see these plants in the background. Uh, you know, I love doing that. I did uh, you know a fair amount of growing myself. And uh, matter of fact, I used a lot of fox farm stuff, but um, I'm not in a position to win anything today because I got nothing to grow. I'm, you know, in North County, San Diego, um, I, I'm sure that there is some growing going on around here, but, uh, you know, not here. And um, so I've been trying to just fit in as much as I can. I've been uh, back in San Diego for a year and a half, a little bit more, and I uh, came out here really after, you know, a lot of, um, you know, financial issues back east in regards to, you know, bank uh, repossessions of, um, you know, my home and uh, police raids uh, about, you know, regarding marijuana, marijuana growing. And um, so after all that, well, by the way, you know, I really never got charged there, but uh, um I actually sued the cops, which is a really cool story. They're losing. But uh, anyway, I'm trying to get some money out of them now. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, come out here, because uh, really California was uh, my home. I came out here when I was a kid. I was 16. I hitchhiked to Los Angeles with 23 bucks and a half ounce of weed and uh, wanted to take over the world. And I, I think I did take over part of the San Fernando Valley, but only for one night. And uh, then I uh, joined the Navy, and I came down here in San Diego. So, uh, again, I'm kind of back home, real glad I'm here. And uh, I came out here with the idea of, uh, you know, helping out with oil production and, uh, you know, anything to do with, with cannabis in regards to growing or any, any way I could fit in. But, you know, it really uh, – it's, it's really a tough uh, – group to get in with and uh especially down here in san diego there's uh you know a lot of politically uh active groups that you know i'm not really sure if they really agree that you know i talk about cannabis as being such a good medicine they want they really want to you know get into the business end of it which you know i think there's room for everybody especially you know, if you're helping somebody with cancer, but uh, they're, they're, they seem to be more uh, polarized towards, um, you know, passing legislations that uh, are self-serving, I guess is a good way to say it, um, and, uh, you know, promoting their own private agendas, and, you know, oftentimes they're, uh, you know, camouflaged to look or sound like something that you might actually want or need. Uh, and uh, so that, you know, I think it's been uphill and uh, I'm, I've only made the oil a few times. I, I made some today, which is kind of ironic, but, um, you know, I, I would think that um, I should be making oil all day long, seven days a week. And, um, you know, that's that's not happening. Um, and so that was a disappointment. And uh, I've just been hanging on, you know, I, I've had some people back east send me a few dollars and some people out here helped me out. I got the veterans to get me a place to live. And it's been really hard, man. I mean, I, I'm living on a hundred bucks a month in uh, Southern California, if you can imagine that. Um, you know, I walk almost everywhere. It's it's crazy, man. Um, you know, I came from, uh, I think, two houses and a couple cars to nothing. <laughs> but um, I really believe in what I'm doing, and that's really, you know, why I continued along uh, that course. And um, I really, uh, in the big picture, I thought what comes around goes around, and, you know, somehow or another, um, you know, it was just going to work out. And, and it has so far. It just hasn't, you know, been, you know, what I thought it was going to be. And, uh, um, you know, needless to say, though, I'm, I'm happy to be here and, uh, you know, um, 
you know, I, I love what I'm doing, and I love love this group, uh, especially uh, you know guys like yourself and, and Daryl Cotton down there at 151. Uh, you know, really really seem to be um, you know a good group. Do you want to tell Do you want to tell us how you got into making cannabis oil and all that? Yeah, I could. Um, I um, you know we in Michigan uh, 2009 we had a ballot proposal. 2008, I think, um, and it was to, uh, you know, legalize medical marijuana. It meant that you had to have the qualifying conditions. And um, that being said, um, you could, with this uh, uh, recommendation, uh, you know, uh, grow and possess uh, cannabis. We could grow 12 plants and possess uh, two and a half ounces of uh, finished uh, flour at any given time. Um, and then we also had a, a, a caregiver program attached to that that would allow, um, through the registration, um, the uh, assignment of up to five patients. And these five patients could, uh, could have 12 plants and so on and so forth. So you could uh, you could grow seventy two plants if if you so desired and had the uh, the patient uh, patients on your uh, you know connected to your registry and all that. So um, that that was all well and good. You know I got to be honest with you. Originally I um, I thought of uh, I'd smoked cannabis my whole life and even though I had a history of cancer and HIV, um, I, I just looked at this card as really a way to avert law enforcement scrutiny in other words i you know i'd never been busted for uh weed before and i i didn't want to so i got the card and i um i started hanging around in the uh the various groups that were forming in michigan and uh uh the compassion clubs and what have you and uh, uh you know a good group of folks they get some great great smoke and we had some good parties and uh that went on for maybe almost a year until uh, the cancer for my for my for my end came back. It reoccurred and has reoccurred, you know, uh, pretty regularly for thirty years or more. It's closer to forty now. Um, time flies, but um, uh, when the cancer reoccurred and I had no more of the fancy insurance, the Blue Cross and all that, and uh, really. Uh, didn't know what to do. I uh, I kept hearing about this Rick Simpson oil, and uh, although I wasn't a believer at the time, I, I considered it as my only option, and I had asked one of these uh, people at the uh, Compassion Club to help me with it, and if they had any, I'd be willing to try it, and they could show me how to make it. I came from a, a coating background with solvents and resins and all that, so, you know, that seemed to be pretty, pretty easy, uh, and uh, that's how it started, and I, I tried this oil, and I tried it topically, and, um, it, and it seemed to have an effect. And um, from that point, I, uh, you know, started getting some little media opportunities. I went to a raid, uh, a raid at a uh, dispensary, and um, the um, the media personality just asked me, you know, why was I why was I there? What was my part in this? Of this marijuana raid and you know what was my story I said well I'm here for my medicine and I was really trying to bolster my buddy's business I guess I said I'm here for my medicine I've tried it on cancer and it's worked and uh, you know that's uh, this guy needs to be protected and he's helping me with uh, with uh, making this oil and so it went on to uh, you know this uh, uh, it was a big radio station they they said, well, you know, that's a cool story, Mike. I mean, <laughs> we haven't heard that before. So, uh, you know, if you could even come close to proving it with any kind of doctors, uh, you know, agreeing with that, we'd, we'd run your story. So we did, and we went to the doctor's office, and, you know, he told them that the cancer was 60% gone, and, you know, he, he thought it was pretty amazing and more, more, more work needed to be done to find out what, you know, this oil, you know, had in store for, you know, cancer and people's, you know, hopes and all that. So uh, that's really where it started. And uh, so I, I became this guy that was uh, running around Michigan talking about this and uh, 
um, I just be became so focused on it that um, I kind of walked away from my regular uh, day job after 30 years or so and um, in this paint and coatings business and uh, I just lost total interest in that and uh, we started making oil one on one for people with cancer they'd come to me and say hey I can't make this stuff if, if you could show me or make it you know uh, please do so I did and um, so I made oil for a bunch of people and I, I learned uh, you know like I say how to do it from uh, uh, a couple of guys that were already, uh, you know, ahead of ahead of the game as far as, uh, you know, they were already making uh, oil for people, and, uh, and that's that's how it started. And I, I just, uh, you know, uh, had my grow in my basement, uh, you know, that wasn't always ready. Um, I would I would generally go out and buy a pound of uh, real high end flour and, uh, um, you know, create. Uh, whatever yield I could get out of that uh, and then just you know send it to the patient and um, you know gave him some instruction as to how to make how to uh, you know titrate it in uh, uh, reasonable doses and, and all that so um, just uh, a lot of growing and uh, you know uh, a lot of oil making as uh, you know my background Well, when you make your oil, are you mostly making it from trim or bud, or do you want to talk more about the quality of the input and as far as output? And yeah, that? well, you know, I again, I came from that the uh, you know high end paint business, and uh, you know, we had a lot of traceability and you know a lot of um, uh, quality uh, guidelines to work with. So, I, you know, I grew up in that engineered kind of environment, so. You know, making a high quality oil, uh, you know, fell right into my wheelhouse. But, um, you know, uh, in, in regards to, you know, how to get a high quality oil, it's, you know, obviously going to start with high quality materials. And uh, I would always use Bud and uh, I would go out and buy, you know, the, the best uh, the best I could find, uh, an Indica strain generally. Um, and... Uh, use that exclusively if um, if I if I had made oil on my end you know with my product which I did um, you know I would put the trim in uh, with the bud uh, but uh, you know that was for my own use and not uh, you know not, not for a patient's uh, use and uh, it evolved into um, you know using more than one strain you know two was better than one and three was better than two and um, you know, if I could find uh, four quarter pounds and an ounce of CBD uh, towards the end was really the ideal. Um, and, uh, you know, I would I'd dry that out and, uh, you know, a real, a real crispy bone dry. And, uh, you know, we started back originally with uh, naphtha and uh, with hydrocarbons, but again, evolved to um, a 190 proof uh, alcohol and, uh, you know, during the winters we had you know real cold winters so that was an advantage in doing extractions uh, you know out in the garage where, where most of this work would be done uh, because of the you know the fire hazard involved and uh, so you know good in good out you know to answer your question is uh, how I made good oil and how I would uh, recommend making it and uh, you know the filtration process was uh, always key to get all the uh, plant material out and uh, generally end up with uh, you know almost a red looking wash you know not uh, you know it didn't look like it came out of a pond or you know it wasn't you know bright green normally um, and um, uh, then I used a rice cooker you know just old school and uh, I would sit out in the garage all night and run these batches um, you know, and uh, next day I would uh, package this stuff up. And a lot of these people were uh, in areas that weren't supporting this medical marijuana. So, you know, I would, um, I'd send it, you know, and uh, UPS it or whatever. And um, down to, you know, all over the place. I, I sent it to Australia, um, Hawaii, uh, a lot of places down in the south, even, even Texas. And, um, 
you know, I, I, these, these people are still around, you know, so, uh, you know, they started with cancer and they tried this oil and, uh, it, it seemed to do, do them a world of good. And, um, so that's really what's kept me motivated is, uh, you know, after having cancer myself and, and it's such a God awful thing to deal with, um, you know, I just thought to myself that, you know, the best thing I could do is to, uh, you know, turn somebody else on to this, this news and to, um, you know, if need be, uh, make it for them so that they, they could get there. Because, you know, a lot, a lot of folks, uh, you know, although easy to make is often and often, uh, I've often heard about making the Simpson oils. It, it is easy to make, but, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of pitfalls in, in regards to, you know, uh, fire safety is the number one uh, issue. And, you know, people that do it indoors and don't, you know, understand what, you know, what the dangers are. Uh, you know, these, these, these people have cancer, so, you know, they're not really going to, you know, get all that, you know. And if it's cold outside, they're going to probably do it on the stove and they're, they're going to burn their house down. So, um, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, the, the cancer people that I have weren't big marijuana fans. They were just so desperate at the end, uh, whether they had done chemo and surgery or whatever, uh, and, and they were trying the oil as a second uh, second fiddle or second chance or last chance. Some of them, uh, you know, came to me uh, early on. They, they, you know, they had the idea of natural treatment, and they always did better than somebody that uh, was part of the Western me medicine protocol for any length of time. You know, including me, I was I was that guy. I did everything they sell they sold. You know, chemotherapy, surgeries. You name it. Uh, I had the squamous cell carcinoma, which just really uh, describes the, the the shape of a cancer cell, and it could be anywhere. I had it, you know, in my rectum, in my neck, my face, um, you know, all over. So, and uh, it it comes back, and I you know I got to battle it back down. So, um, I haven't, you know, on my end, it's so it's really crazy that I've been. Uh, making oil for a few other people and not had any on my end, which, you know, I, I don't have any, which is insane. And uh, so, I, you know, I'm not in the best shape and I, you know, I need to get back on that. So, you know, that really was part of my uh, goal when I came out here was to, you know, somehow get into that niche where, you know, I could produce my own and, and or make for other people and all that sort of thing. So, um it's it's really uh, you know I I think it's crazy too but you know I you know I make it and people come to me and uh, you know I make their oil for them and I I give them whatever I get and uh, um, I, I'm not making any for myself because uh, you know you can't make oil on a hundred dollars a month <laughs> it just just doesn't work out so uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at now. <clears throat> well, I know a lot of people around here they'll do it like a split so. You know, if you know if somebody's donating the material and somebody else is doing the work, that you'll you know arrange some sort of agreement where you can at least keep some of the material and hopefully get some treatment for yourself too. Yeah, no, I know the split thing is good, and I'd be willing to do that. Um, you know, these couple of people that uh, I've helped out, you know, you know, that didn't really have a lot of money either, so I just, uh, you know, that that that. You know, I just I just try to help out where I can. So, making oil for a couple of days doesn't doesn't cost me much. You know, I got nothing really better to do. Um, you know, obviously not working professionally out here or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, if uh, you guys know uh, of some folks that could use some help, that would be great. Maybe we can get together and uh, I can do some satellite, you know, uh, support. Come up, come over and help somebody out or whatever. But I'm all about that, sure. Yeah, we'll definitely so you're, you're to reach out and help you know? them. Can you email us? Good. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, ideally, I'd like to get up to Humboldt, um, and uh, I will definitely be heading up there. Um, you know, this uh, fall for harvest time because uh, I do have a guy that uh, 
has uh, got run into a little pile of money, and he, he wants to get an LB and make uh, and have me make him oil. So, and uh, you know, I'm sure that I, I can get a little bit of that from him. But um, you know, I'm really looking forward to getting up to the triangle. I've never been there, and uh, that you know will obviously be uh, mega cool for me to to finally get up there and. Uh, you know, ho hopefully, uh, you know, I can meet some peeps up there, and uh, heck, I could stay up there and make oil, whatever. But uh, uh, just kind of playing it by ear right now. I'm trying to get, you know, social security for four years now, and you know that they they've turned me down. Um, you know, that's that's been really tough. Uh, as you can imagine, not being sick enough with cancer and AIDS, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to add to that, but. Um, Ridiculous. Yeah, it's um, it's called not taking their medicine, and if you're if you're not part of that financial loop, uh, with the pharmaceutical companies and the doctors and that whole that whole triangle of death, then um, then you're you know you're really in, uh, you're you're not in favor. You know you're not you're not going to do well in the system. So I've, I've kind of done that to myself when I've I've made my statements and I. You know, I refuse their medication and their their treatments, and uh, uh, it, it's been pretty, you know, um, you know, deliberate. I think on the part of, uh, you know, not only my doctors but Social Security to, uh, you know, to to really, you know, not not help me, you know, anymore. I'm not I'm not their poster boy anymore, and. Uh, Social Security, uh, obviously, um, if if you're not taking AIDS medicine, then you must be okay, you know, or whatever. I I I don't know that, you know, as these pills change shape and form, and the formulas change, and you know, all of a sudden that one's no good, and this one is, uh, you know, all these approved medicines that keep constantly changing. Well, you know, I I just choose to take none, and. Uh, uh, I haven't heard that their medicine would would help me much, anyway. So, you know, I'm I'm kind of, kind of, uh, kind of in bad shape with that program. You know. Yeah, I can understand. You had something you were saying earlier, uh, Uncle Panic Dummy. I'm sorry, man. I can't. I I didn't hear you. You were saying something earlier. Oh, I was. Uh, I was wondering if uh, if I heard right that he's uh, Mike has nothing going on currently. Right. Yeah, nothing going on. Man. I wish I lived closer, man. I would do my best to help you out. Yeah. Yeah. It's really crazy because uh, you know all these things. I've you know I've grown and. Uh, I ran a big salt water tank. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of the stuff that um, you know we're talking about doing, and uh, you know these these folks around here are uh, I don't know how to describe it. You know, but um, it's it's bizarre. It's 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 all about um, you know protecting their their own. Uh, it's all business. You know, I, you hear no talk about oil. And cancer and what it'll do. Uh, they they sell shit oil out here. You know, it, it's sixty percent effect, sixty percent THC. Um, there's there's really no way you know it's going to help any super, you know, chronic condition. Uh, I think they're just putting it out there as filler, as as stuff that doesn't work. You know, and buying time for these pharmaceutical companies to get their permits and whatever uh, GW. You know, is is ready to to unload this oil on the world, and uh, you know, the last thing they want is somebody like me <laughs> out there. This is I can I can do it for less money. I mean, whoa, um, you know. So yeah, that's that's really the dealio, man. Um, it's it's really a, a a very tense market, and uh, you know, I, I don't I don't see how you know this Prop sixty four thing. Uh, to me, it makes it even worse. Um, you know, it just helps these big businessmen, uh, the Monsantos and the, the, the George Soroses of the world um, thrive at our expense. It's me, a guy like me, 
is the one taking it on the chin with this and um you know all the way from the top down and i don't mind competition we ought to you know i'll be able to do this or, or make our own if we so choose um i mean the craft beer people do it but you know whatever but um anyway yeah that's my that's my thought on that for those that don't know gw pharma is a big pharmaceutical company They're the only ones that are working with the federal government right now <clears throat> on cannabis oil production and other cannabis products um, they're the only company with the DEA exemption to import uh, cannabis and um, high THC hemp or high CBD hemp uh, into the country right now. Um, I think from Spain or the Great Britain, I forget which one of the two, where it's being grown right now. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, it's in England someplace. Yeah, in, in England. Um, and so they're kind of like the biggest, uh, they're, they are the Monsanto of, of weed right now. Um, and they have the potential to completely jack up the whole market. So, yeah, well, GW, you know, is really Merck, and, and Merck is it. You know, they're they're the General Motors of um, uh, you know the, the pharmaceutical industry. They they they're it. They're the number one. So, you know, this little little uh, GW house sounds low. Well, you know, that's no big deal. But uh, they are it's, it, they're sharks. You know, and they've got these. Um, separate businesses uh set up and um if you look at their website for example they talk of nothing but oncology based products uh they take a little bit about um you know other things but by and large um it's it's really cancer that's what they're after and um you know they're going to do their extractions using hexane that's what they use and you know rotavap you know, which is all stuff we can get here. Uh, you know, we don't we don't need uh, you know you know to be a, a big pharmaceutical company to make this kind of product. And uh, you know, using that kind of equipment, of course, draws it into a very safe uh, arena in regards to running a vacuum and low temperatures and you know low or no flash points to be worried about in a closed loop system. You know, you know all all the things you want to you know think about when you're running a process like this. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's big business, and um, that's what these um, these proposals are all designed uh, to bring uh, is uh, you know more business to them, and uh, you know if, if we if we benefit, fine. If not, fine. That's that's okay. So. Uh, you know, cancer is big business. I, th I think that the last thing any of these companies want to do is uh, is realistically, you know, bring this to the to the public view. And uh, that's what these marijuana people uh, don't like about me is I, I start saying it on, on Fox News, or at least I have, and they, they just run for cover. I mean, it's like, it changes public opinion, and when it changes public opinion, all of a sudden it makes marijuana into something that's not bad, it's good. You know, it can help Uncle Bill with his cancer, Aunt Jenny with her with her condition, and all of a sudden you're the best thing going. And, um, and um, you know, and when, when you uh, uh, start ruffling these feathers, uh, you know, all of a sudden, these these private deals start to break down, and uh, you know what these guys want to do is sell uh, recreational marijuana, which I do too. I think it's the best thing going. You know, it replaces booze. You know, what's wrong with that? But um, you know, once once these these activists uh, get wind of this kind of direction, they they tend to turn it down. I've been. I've done a lot of radio shows back east, even one here in California. I think we spent two minutes talking about cancer and, and the rest of the show talking about other things, which, I mean, I, I don't know how that that even makes sense to me, that somebody's coming up up to the plate and saying that there's there's some chance that, you know, this could be helpful. It would, it would really get my attention, and, it, uh, you know, and it did. But... Um, that's that's really what um, what's going on. It's it's, it's really um, it's really not uh, it's, it's evil. I think I really uh, it's upsetting to me. 
Yeah, I think it, you know, it's definitely a cash grab on more than one front. I think, you know, you, not only do you have like the significant amount of medications and all of that stuff, but everything that's hidden in between as well. You have all of the fraud, which they get away with because of the volume that they have. And without the volume of drugs being pushed, it makes it harder to commit fraud on, on larger scale. So I think that on multiple fronts, we get screwed in that respect. And then, not, you know, it all starts with taking away our ability to make our own medicine and, and literally putting us in jail for, <laughs> for doing it, you know, and ruining people's lives for years and years and years just for trying to treat something that they never wanted in the first place. It's just ridiculous. Right. Well, what, you know, what so, we got here, uh, at least in California is, uh, you know, the Supreme Court a year and a half ago or so, you know, validated the idea that, you know, this oil is medicine. So that's on, on one end. And then you got Prop 215, this 20 year old uh, marijuana law that, you know, created the idea of making the medicine. But, you know, somewhere along the line, um, you know, the San Diego County Sheriff, for example, uh, would raid you for making oil and give you seven years in prison. Uh, because you're a risk to public safety. Now, I can tell you what, man, I spent a lot of years in the paint business and I saw a lot of unsafe practices in my, as a matter of fact, I was an expert witness in, in uh, fires and um, fire related uh, issues in big, big factories. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, there is some risk in it, but if, if approached right, um, I've, I've, I've never burned anything down making oil, and I've done it hundreds of times. Um, not, not to say that you couldn't, but, uh, you know, it, it, the, the, those issues are all fire marshal issues. And if the fire marshal comes out to a scene and sees something out of whack, he calls the cops. That's how that works. You know, he calls an arson or he calls an unsafe practice, and that's when the cops come. But, you know, when you send the hazmat team uh, with the cops and and who knows who else is going to show up, um, the DEA and whatever, uh, this is just is not normal protocol for any other industry but ours. So, you know, that's discrimination. And um, that's, uh, you know, putting the cart before the horse. It's, it's not even, uh, it, it doesn't even make sense that, you know, a cop could look at a piece of equipment or uh, an industrial process and, and tell you it was safe or it wasn't. And they're not they're not capable of doing that. You know, so you know, why why would we put that in in their hands and then at risk of you know seven years in prison for this? So here's a situation you can you can have the oil and and it's legitimate, but you know you can't make it. So. You know, if you can't make it, it means you can't have it. That's that's really what it ma means. Right. Like the tax, the, uh, what was it, the tax stamp in 1937 when they finally, uh, when Congress, you know, made marijuana illegal, there was some little, uh, you know, back door to it. Well, you know, if you get the tax stamp, you could still do it. Well, guess guess what you couldn't get? You couldn't get the tax stamp, you know? So it's it just, it just a round robin uh you know, it's circle talk is, is really what it is. So um, these are these are things that, you know, need to be ironed out. And, um, you know, again, I, I look at that really, I mean, as cronyism. And um, I, I look at uh, the police as usual, you know, protecting at the street level these pharmaceutical companies because these are the people that want to bring oil to you. But, you know, it's, it's not going to be 35 or 50 bucks a gram. You know, it's going to be 1,800 a gram. You know, it's going to fill in a, a, a market that they've already got. You know, they're selling you $40,000 of, of chemotherapy a week. I mean, what do you think the oil is going to cost? You know, uh, so, you know, the only, the only way they're going to do that is to get an exclusive monopoly on providing the oil. And, um, you know, once they got that, then they can turn it into the war on drugs and whatever that are, has, you know, been over the years, uh, you know, that we've dealt with. But, uh, you know, by and large, it's really, uh, 
you know, it's it's a counterfeit program, and uh, you know, it should be avoided. You're saying that the the mass produced oils is is much lower quality. Do you want to talk about like I guess comparison and quality with the oils and stuff like that and all? Well, I think GW could make some really good oil. I I'd be surprised if they couldn't. It's not that hard to do. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, really low quality oil out there. I mean, if you listen to people like Rick Simpson, I mean, uh, that's all he'll say is, you know what, make your own. The, the only way through this is to cover your own ass. And, uh, you know, by and large, that's where I have fit in because, uh, you know, I, I, you know, whether or not uh, you know, these people could, could make the oil, uh, most of them could, and that's, that's why they, you know, they got a hold of me. But um, I, I think there's a, you know, mostly uh, low quality oil out there. Uh, you know, here in San Diego, you know, there's there's oil. Uh, you know, it's not even made with uh, with solvent. It's you know made with CO2, which you know is not going to give you uh, all the components of the plant. Uh, you know, chemistry that you need. I mean, I mentioned using two or three or four kinds of bud, and you know when you use uh, trim material and you know run CO2 and make a you know, a product that looks like oil and get you high. I mean, if you put it on a nail and smoke it, you know, it'll certainly um, get hot. You'll, you'll certainly get high off of it, but it just doesn't have the, the magic that, you know, this, this full-bodied, uh, full-extract oil, uh, you know, can produce and all the... Uh, all the magic uh, chemicals that are in that, you know, I, I don't, I don't even know what they are. You know, it's like um, some of the cancers I work on. I, you know, I couldn't even pronounce them. I just know they got it, and and the oil will help them. And you know, that's that's as simple as that. And then when you see the, the you know, the cancer actually go in reverse, and then you know, uh, and essentially disappear the same way it showed up. Uh, it, that's that's incredible, but um, yeah, I have no doubt that the pharmaceutical companies will make some beautiful oil. I mean, it's it, you know, with the equipment they've got, it, you know, they how couldn't you? But um, commercially in these stores, you know, there's anything from uh, you know hemp-based compounds used as uh, you know base materials, which I mean, you might as well rub sand on skin cancer for that. I mean. That would have no effect whatsoever. Um, all the way up to these, you know, I see oil up about 60% THC um, here in Southern California, and that's it. They're, they just hit a wall at that at that level. And, uh, I mean, honestly, at some level, I, I do think that it's, they're just blanks out there. They, you know, people would, would think, okay, I'm going to try it, and it doesn't work, and they end up dying or going back to the hospital for some treatment and then dying. Um, you know, it, it, it gives us a bad track record, uh, if nothing else, uh, to not have the high quality oil out there, you know, for these people to try. Quite frankly, I, I regularly put pictures on Facebook of what real oil looks like. And the reason I do that is because people don't know what it is. I mean, you could sell them a tube of grease, you know, and that that's oil i mean they don't know so you know unless they got some reference point you know visual reference or what have you um there's no way of knowing and uh uh you know these most of these uh you know these storefront type people they they don't know i mean they, they got the price in their head and you walk in and you ask for simpson oil hey we got it you know it's funny because you always see it in one gram uh tubes you know and you know, medicine would never really come in one gram tubes. It would come in 10 gram tubes. And that, and that tells you that, you know, the, the whole mindset there is just all about getting high, you know, because if it wasn't, you know, you would have, you know, a whole, a whole 60 or 80 grams of oil available as a, a cancer kit, you know, for this person so that, you uh, you know, they could they could buy that or, you know, make a donation for that or whatever they're doing to get it um, and have that quantity of oil to take home and to to use as they see fit as fast as possible to, 
you know, treat their condition. There's, nobody's going to go to the store and buy one gram of Simpson oil at a time. You know, right. I mean, it's, that's, that's silly, you because, know. I mean, just for the people that don't know or, or, you know, that are maybe listening, just because you would consume it so quickly but once you got up to a full dosage that you, you'd be going like multiple times a day if you were actually using it in an effective dosage. And that's yeah. what we, that's what we tried yeah. to talk about here when they implemented um, the uh, restrictions on the amount that you can have in packaging. They did that here in Oregon too, where now you can only have a certain number of milligrams per package and it makes everybody's medicine more expensive, even for the people that do have to go to the dispensary. Like let's say somebody like yourself who, you know, who has cancer and wants to, to come here in order to treat it. When you go to the dispensary, even if you went in to the store and you had cash in hand and were ready to buy it, now because of the packaging restrictions, you're probably going to spend close to 10 times as much on the same milligrams of medication because they had to package it essentially 10 times more than they did before, which increases all of their costs, which increases your cost to be able to do it. Whereas by one package of medication, you bought 10 packages of medication. Now, yeah, they, technically they made more money and for really no reason. There's no point in having it in that, that small of dosages. And so unfortunately they didn't listen. And uh, in order to protect the children, we now have that here in, uh, in Oregon where you're, they're restricted on the number of milligrams that you can have per package. Um, even even for medication, regardless, basically any extract, any edible, um, it, everything is limited to 10 milligrams, which is just ridiculous. Yeah, something else that's in uh, Amendment 64 is the, um, <clears throat> the 10 milligram restriction for dose. Uh, they want to have no more than oh, yeah. 10 milligrams per dose, and was it 10 doses per package? So you're yeah. telling me you limit to 100 milligrams? How on earth are you going to limit a, a, a dab, you know, wax or shatter or rosin so that you can't? A 10 milligram dosage of that would be like, I'm going to have to get an exacto knife out and a microscope. You know what I mean? Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And then, no, so let's take that into context. Now, if you're a cancer patient who needs to take one to three grams of, of oil a day, how, how on earth are you going to get a, a 10 milligram dosage like that? You're, you're at, like Marty was saying, you're buying like cases of stuff at that point when before you could buy that in one or two packages or just a, what you could fit in a brown paper bag. And for no other reason than bullshit ass packaging and the whole making things easier or harder for kids, easier to uh, keep out of kids' hands or harder for them to buy or whatever. And it's ridiculous, you know? Uh, we don't do this with, with, with 151 rum. Or Everclear mm -hmm. or or ninety seven percent gin does that have to be in a different different thing? No, you know, does all liquor have to be limited to five percent? No. Okay, so why are we why are we having this conversation? Or if I need to get a prescription filled at the drugstore, can I get a, a one thousand pill prescription if that's what it says? Yeah, the, 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 that's the reason we have a dispensary to start with. Like we, exactly. we already went through this discussion when we when we decided to have dispensaries like yeah, when, I met with the entire point. when I met with my doctor and he told me how much I needed and how much my dose was and then when they verified that at the point of sale with the dispensary who again I then again gave me a recommended dosage again okay so I've been through all that why the hell do you need to then limit me again but, but, but feel free to get your script for Vicodin and drive over to the pharmacy and have them dispense them in handy little packages, as many oh, yeah. as you need for the next six months, and you'll be fine. You can totally be on Vicodin, Abilify, like Risperdal for your like psychosis, and get sleeping pills, so you're driving around in the morning, like complete not like, all that, get pulled over, not get a DUI. Like the complete kill yourself kit. Like, yeah, just, that's pretty much everything you need to kill, and I've seen drive, drive cool, almost like all of those. Yeah, so, but. Fun. Let's protect the children from cannabis, people. 10 milligrams. That's the important yeah. part. Well, I think that's, you know, my personal thought is, again, it's a way to restrict, uh, you know, the quantity that you can have. And, you know, we, um, you know, I suggest 1,000 milligrams a day to people, you know, uh, in this oil up to a gram or, or more a day. And, uh, 
you know, I've, I've heard some of these uh, restrictions, hit, you know, you can only process one ounce of, uh, of flour material at a time to make an extraction. Well, I, I told you I do a pound, you know, if I could do a pound and a half or two, I would. I mean, that, the only thing slowing me down is the money, you know, and um, so it's never less, it's it's more. And, um, you know, I've, I've never uh, had a situation where, you know, this became addictive in any way for anybody that was taking it. As a matter of fact, I got people off of opiates with it. And um, I, uh, I've, I've never got a call in the middle of the night, hey man, I need, I need more of that oil uh, or, or any of that uh, ever. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you a little story. We had a girl come to us with, uh, you know, some god awful brain cancer. Uh, and this was three or four years ago, maybe four or five, I don't know, uh, but, um, Regardless, uh, she lived in Michigan and had this um, uh, spider cancer in the brain, which meant that there was no single mass, there was no tumor that, you know, that could really, uh, it was inoperable in its, in its uh, design, that um, it just went all the way through her brain. And um, so we, uh, we got her on an oil regimen and um, we actually even uh, had the, uh, University of Michigan uh, medical people uh, watching her and uh, for a while she was actually telling them that um, she was doing the chemotherapy pill whatever they sent her home with and you know they were getting really excited about the results and it um, at the end of the day it turned out to be cannabis and um, you know she was eventually uh, cleared from that and um, uh, they, you know, had stated that, you know, her, she was cancer free and, um, you know, I'll go you one step further that um, when she took, uh, took her driver's ed test, um, when she was, uh, you know, a year later or whatever, she was still taking uh, a gram and a half a day of this oil and kid weighed about a hundred pounds, maybe less. And, um, um, from a practical standpoint, she was taking her, her state exam for her first driver's license. So, I mean, she didn't know how to drive and yet, you know, she was able to pull the wool over the auditor's eyes and, um, and pass her driver's ed test um, and cure cancer. And, you know, here was a kid that, you know, like I say, uh, 95 pounds worth and um, you, you'd think that she would in some way be... Uh, you know, affected by this, and uh, you know, uh, she, well, she she wasn't. You get used to it, and um, you know, it's kind of a, it's really just a joke. But you know, you know, she passed the driver's ed test and uh, was on you know fifteen hundred milligrams. So you know, that's a real world example that I you know I won't forget. And um, you know. It's it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. a lot of people don't realize how much different tolerance levels are when you're doing something besides just vaping or smoking or rolling joints or, you know, like it's not, you know, not the same uh, experience, I guess, in terms of tolerance and you can build up much faster. <clears throat> and a lot of people, um, you know, there's a lot of documentation on RSO and building it up to very high milligrams so that you're not, you know, like freaking out, obviously, but you start out very small and build up to to very large doses without without um, you know having, I guess, uh, the inability to function. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about how you're making your oil right now for treatment. Like, let's say you. You had some. You want to just give like a quick process of, of how you, how you make your your medicine for your treatment. Well, uh, you know, generally uh, I, I start uh, with dried flour and then um, I, I crush it up uh, almost to a rolling uh, consistency. You know, uh, it's broken down a lot of surface area, but you know, not not overly fine. You know, I don't want powder. Um, as much as I want, you know, a, a good flaky base. And um, so I'll take whatever flower material that might be and uh, um, wash it with uh, 
of frozen uh, 190 proof alcohols. Uh, I normally get that out of uh, Oregon, Allchem. They um, they'll ship that uh, product, and they have about five different varieties of uh, organic 190 proof uh, grain alcohol. And uh, you know, some people have preferences. You know, a lot of times I'll use the corn. You know, this like the regular booze stuff. And um, so I do a really quick um, and cold uh, wash. Both the uh, flour material and the uh, alcohol um, are as cold as I can get them. You know, ideally I'd like to work in a, uh, a walk-in freezer, you know, as cold as I can get it. And um, I mean, we can't freeze alcohol, you know, in the kind of ranges that we, our equipment works. So, you know, as cold as you can. And uh, I do a quick three minute wash and uh, I get the uh, plant material out of the wash as quick as I can. And uh, historically I've always used uh, five gallon containers, you know, a, a stainless steel can with a, uh, a large, um, like a filter bag type uh, um, process. So, you know, the, the flow rate is really high um, and you're not eating up your three minutes by, you know, dripping or pouring or, or fooling around with that. It's, it's quick. And um, actually, what what if I'm working out of a five, I'll uh, have um, a, a a paint strainer with a an elastic uh, a garter top, uh, you know, an elastic top, uh, and and stretch that into a five gallon bucket. Drop everything in there, freeze it, and uh, when I drop the alcohol in it, you know, as fast as I can, I'll give it a, a three minute uh, soak and a, a gentle stir with, uh, you know, something like a pasta spoon or this sort of thing, and just kind of move it around. And, and I pull that bag, that big tea bag, right out, and uh, then we'll, we'll hold it over the can until it, you know, it stops dripping. And uh, um, from that point, I'll, uh, I'll filter that, that, that wash out uh, right away with those bag filters. And that's, I don't know if you guys know paint or, you know, boxing paint. And you're pouring one five-gallon can right into another one and mixing it back and forth. That's basically what I'm doing. And I'm moving this filter screen from side to side. And I, uh, I can shake the stuff right off the screen. It comes off really easy. And uh, so I, I box this back and forth about six times and end up with this uh, wash that looks, you know, pretty much like gasoline. And uh, and then from that point, uh, you know, I have I have had the opportunity to be part of uh, you know the rotavap type arrangements. I, you know, I, I just watched and I sat in on a few of those, uh, which is really cool. But uh, by and large, uh, I uh, I just I got a modified rice cooker uh, that I brought out here uh, from Detroit, and uh, I use that and. Uh, Boil the uh, the product down. Uh, try to keep the the liquid level up high as I can, so that there doesn't develop a dirt line. And uh, you can just keep filling up the pot, you know, all day, all night, whatever. And um, it uh, ev eventually you end up with uh, the oil at the bottom of the uh, rice cooker. And uh, just gotta you know time it right and unplug the rice cooker. And then from that point, actually. I'm a big fan of uh, heat gun uh, treatment to the oil and uh, to drive out. Um, there's a couple drops of water sometimes I'll, I'll put in there right before I unplug it, but uh, try to steam some of that solvent out. Uh, water and solvent love each other, and um, that that uh, steam that blows out of there at the end uh, can really clean it up nice. But um, to, to finish the product, uh, I'll finish it with a like a Milwaukee heat gun. Um, I go back to my uh, paint booth and oven days where, you know, to dry paint you you need air changes and heat. You know, uh, you, so it's really the air change that helps you drive the solvent out, and um, at least for me. And uh, so um, I drive that that rest of that solvent out and. Uh, 
I get I just get a, a certain look that you know the little paisley uh, spots on the top of the oil finally disappear and it goes real clear and um, it's you know just a, an eyeball type thing and uh, from that point I uh, package it up in uh, the oral syringe and uh, uh, off it goes you know the guys are normally waiting you know right there I've had people drive up you know, uh, 1,200 miles to sit in my driveway while I made it, you know, I mean, they were really, they really wanted to get this cancer under control, you know, and whatever, but, you know, it's yeah. a little bit of, you know, understand that. some funny stories. <clears throat> That's cool. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> is. And, uh, you know, this one, the one lady, I said, you know, I don't know how many unlawful states you got to drive through to get home, but, you know, I could FedEx that stuff to you, and you'll get it tomorrow. And she would have no part of it. She was going to race 90 miles an hour all the way down to wherever she went and uh, and cure her oil and whatever. She used to be a truck driver, I guess. But anyway, she's still alive. And uh, you know, most of these people I uh, I've helped are you know I I still hear of them or I, sometimes I see them online and I think, wow, that, that really worked out good. And uh, you know, because their option was, uh, you know, to not even not be alive. So um, this was a major coup in, uh, you know, the survivability of, of cancer and, uh, and and other other things. You know, I, the guy the guy I was working on today, uh, he's got Parkinson's, and uh, I made him a THCA oil that it was it's unactivated, and. Um, the whole extraction was was done pretty much the same way, except there was no rice cooker. Uh, you know, you just put it in a glass pan with a, a, a fair amount of surface area, and uh, three days later the alcohol dries out, and um, and you really got to turn that into a tincture because uh, uh, you know to, to get the oil off the bottom of the pan, you put in something else to do that, which you know in this case was. Uh, Coconut oil and olive oil, like three quarters olive oil, with uh, you know the coconut base uh, for viscosity control. So it was a little beefier in the uh, in the dropper, you know, when you do the little under tongue application. And uh, he's had good luck with this uh, THCA oil uh, with some cannabis he grew out in the hills of San Diego, someplace, and uh, um, you know came out red. Red Bible oil. <laughs> That's what I always look like. Look at you know is what it looks like, and it. Um, right, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a beautiful thing, and uh, so I left him with about eight ounces of this stuff, and uh, you know he was a real happy camper. So uh, yeah, it's uh you know it's it's interesting to do it. It's um, you know it's a fairly long process that has you know certain steps that have to be taken, and there's long gaps of 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 you know just you know low low uh you can't uh, heat it up right because once you heat it up then it's going to activate it so oh yeah yeah when you're doing it in uh in the rice cooker or any any heat uh you know that's going to activate it and decarboxylate you know de de decarboxylate the the product that that one little molecule of oxygen will come off pretty easily and, and even over time this uh this guy is under the understanding that you know in three or four months this uh, this THCA oil will start to you know turn into a delta nine type you know material and then the guy you know he smokes I you know not sure really why he's so stuck on this but it's just something that he you know he wanted and uh, you know I'm no expert I you know if somebody is is uh, you know understands what they want uh, and I don't see anything uh, you know. Uh, risky with it, or you know, uh, to that level, uh, I'm you know, I'm all for it. So uh, it was just a different way of doing it. But that was that was uh, today's. Uh, it was the end of about. I I started it Sunday, and this was uh, this is Thursday. So it took three or four days to get that done because of that that long dwell time to get it, you know, uh, flashed off. Was there a particular reason why you wanted to do THA? Like did they did he not want it activated for some sort of medical reason or because he didn't want to get high? 
Well, yeah, I think he knows people that don't want to get high, and and they may right. be bene- they may be benefiting from his his effort. I, that's my guess, because he smokes. You know, I, I don't I don't understand it exactly, but um, originally he came to me with a a, a, a a protocol on how to you know quote unquote make oil, and it was a page after page after page. I read it all. I said, well, this is all good, and we could do this, but there's a lot of steps in here that. You know, really don't make sense to me. And then there's other steps in here that would actually, you know, take away from the inherent quality that, you know, we can get by doing it quicker and, uh, you know, more efficiently. So I kind of modified his original uh, plan. Uh, he had it all printed out. He got it from somebody, and you know, this was going to be the way to make his oil. And I, uh, you know, we settled for, you know. His oil and my my version of making it, and uh, um, but it was really uh, you know driven you know by by him, and uh, uh, that's that's what he wanted, and so that's what I made. Cool. When you've done um, C, have you done CBD uh, ratio? You know, worked on the CBD THC ratio stuff, and then I guess when you did, did you do it with short path distillation, or did you do it in a different method? I would uh, use short path, and I really haven't. Um, I, you know, we we didn't have any uh, uh, CBD strains to speak of, uh, at least when I started this. Uh, and our, you know, our direction uh, was really, uh, as far as cancer, uh, was not to use it, was not to use CBD, and um, I I see a lot of people talking about that one to one ratio. And um, that's that's all well and good to me. I mean, uh, I, I would I wouldn't uh, take any less of the THC oil. And if I was going to go with one to one, then I would just add the CBD component to it. So if they were taking one gram, uh, that's me. That's what I would tell you. Um, if um, you were taking one gram of high THC oil a day, um, then I would say then you should take another gram. Of CBD oil, or you know, we can formulate it into one, you know, and that's really just you know a matter of blending. Um, and you could take two capsules a day, or six instead of three, or you know whatever it turns out to be. Um, but my, you know, I, I guess uh, you know I'm just old school. I, I just normally think of you know high THC oils for cancer now. You know some of these other things. If you know epilepsy, there's there's nothing but CBD. That's that's all I think of. Um, but I, I, you know, I've just not had enough access to it to really get involved. I'll, uh, you know, get an ounce of CBD product and throw it into my uh, blend of you know a couple, two or three different uh, indicas. You know, and at the end of the day, I'm really looking for you know, maybe 5% CBD and 90% THC, um, what I would consider, you know, the best oil for cancer. But, you know, uh, I, I base that on, uh, you know, my own feelings. I don't, I don't have any research to really support that. Well, you're not dead. Yeah, I was going to say. That's a cancer or something. I mean, right? Yeah. I know. A lot, you know, a lot of people help survive a lot, so you must be onto something, right? You know. Yeah, I mean, it works, you know. So uh, I'm, uh, you know, really, uh, I believe in things that work, and um, you know, I've I've tried a lot of stuff in in industrial applications, and you know, a lot of a lot of things that you know make sense, but they didn't always work out, you know. And uh, we'd we'd always be trying different things with robots and, you know, oh, whatever, you know, and some of these ideas just never really, uh, you know, worked out. And uh, when it comes to cancer and uh, these individual lives, um, I, I really tend to have a, a narrow perspective on, you know, what's, what's, you know, suitable and, you know, what these people need. And, uh, you know, if, if it is CBD, um, like I say, then you know, to me, it just it it, it becomes a more expensive, uh, you know, uh, treatment because 
there's that, that secondary material, one to one. That means I'm going to start with my one gram, my thousand milligrams, uh, and then if, if you want to go one to one, then it's 2,000. And, uh, you know, the other, the other uh, CBD materials has to come from somewhere. I don't think anybody's given that away either. So uh, if, if that's what somebody wanted, I, I would do it. Um, but I, I would definitely uh, use um, the short path method. That would definitely be the smart thing to do. Um, I, I haven't owned any equipment myself. Um, I, uh, you know, would uh, I would, but that would be my direction for sure. Do you have any other uh, anything else? I guess you want to talk about in regards to oil or uh, any of our live viewers? I see a couple of people in chat. If you guys have any questions about oil, he's talking about. Feel free to chime in on chat. How about aquaponic Dume over there? You're awfully yeah. quiet. What are you up to? Actually, I'm really having a hard time hearing you guys. I think I picked a bad location to, to shoot here. It looks nice, though. I see your plant back there. Yo, Marty and I... Marty and I each did that one time, and then we realized the grow room is like a horrible place as far as audio is concerned. <laughs> Between like the ballasts buzzing and, you know, just everything makes noise. <laughs> but it looks so nice. It, it does. It looks great. Actually, I've been, like I said, uh, I, I'm trying, I don't know if you guys have ever worked with any hormones or synthetic hormones. Yep. Uh, but I, I sprayed... Uh, uh, 6BA. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. Yep. Comes a little baggy like this right here. It looks like looks like something else, but it <laughs> dissolves in acid or uh, or a base. It's plant coke, man. I'm sorry. It's plant coke, man. Yeah. No, I, I um I ended up spraying it on these plants, and they didn't look like they like it at all. <laughs> But this whole room has been sprayed down, so I, I wanted to do a test to see how it would affect the fish. Um, and uh, I don't know, it's not affecting the I mean, as you can see here, I, I post on my um, my YouTube channel there where I'm using um, uh, praying mantis. And you can see here one of the eggs that hasn't hatched yet. I don't know oh, if you can cool. see it on there. Yeah, I can see it. Your fish mother, Caitlin, yeah. now using the hormones? What's that? Your fish wants you to call them Caitlin now that you use the hormones. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> they haven't really. It hasn't really affected the fish at all, which I'm I'm really happy about. Uh, I mean, I just did a foliar spray, so it's uh. uh now I was kind of worried about it at first, but now I'm more worried about my plants than anything else. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. They don't look like they agree with it altogether. No, no, well, it was it was a uh, it was pretty basic spray that I put on them. So it was uh, Blue Labs pH up is what I ended up using. So uh, potassium uh, hydroxide. Hydroxide. Yep. Potassium hydroxide. So I don't know. What, we'll see what happens. What is it supposed to do? Is it supposed to? It's, like it's uh, it? cyanin or uh, is that say that right? There, uh, there's uh, there's five uh, hormones that uh, plants are affected by: uh, ethyl ethylene, uh, oxen, chy uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, and the phytocyanin, and uh, what the hell's the other one? I know it's talking other about. We'll call it. Uh, I, I don't, yeah. Acid is another. One. one more. Um, and I, I did, I ended up ordering a bunch of it. Uh, this is, this year is, uh, I ended up getting off eBay. Uh, this is, um, NAA, uh, which is uh, synthetic oxygen and, uh, gibberellic acid, which is more of a, if you're, if you're planning on, uh, seeding out your plant or if, uh, you need help with, uh, rooting or, uh, germinating seed, uh, gibberellic acid can help. Um, 
and then, like I said, I'm, I'm working with uh, kind of side in here, or cytokinin. Cytokinin? That's it. Cytokinin. <laughs> So yeah, we'll see, we I uh, I decide to see what it can do, and uh, I don't I don't like it so far, but we'll see. I've done some work with uh, organically isolated phytocyanin and a couple of other anthocyanin isolates, and they all kick ass. But if you overdose them, or especially if they aren't used to them in the in the full year, they they yeah. definitely stress they stress out. We can see. I'm fine. I, I've never used any hormones before other than like uh, Clonex, something like that. So this is, uh, this is all new to me. But I figured yeah. learning experience and uh, I mean, I have plenty of medicine on my own already. Uh, so this is, this whole grow right here is, is, uh, is simply testing. If right. I lose them all, it's not really a big deal. That's cool. For those of you who don't know. You can see over here. Go ahead. I don't know if you guys have ever grown any uh, pineapple, <laughs> but this here's pineapple on an aquaponic pineapple. We'll see what happens. You can nice. see it kind of rooting here. Yeah, uh, my kids saw you guys a YouTube video about one, and now they want to do a, a pineapple. What do they call it? A pineapple in a jar or something like that? They taught yeah. at school, I think, and, or one of their friends or something. So they want to, they love to stuff shit in the aquaponic <laughs> grow beds all the time. Like, I have tons of shit in there now. I have like probably like twelve too many tomato plants and like <laughs> just all kinds of. I have rad, the raspberry is like the raspberry plant's like almost taken over the whole like front grow. It's like uh, what do we have in there? We have spinach, we have peas, we have like a whole section that my son decided just needed to have uh, green beans in it. So like the whole right side is now just like getting overgrown with green beans <laughs> and. Uh, so <clears throat> that's the next thing they want to shove in there is a pineapple and, and do that. Oh, dad, 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 look what we found. So we, we put all kinds of, we put in leeks, we put in green onions that we just buy from the store. Basically anything that still has roots, they're like, let's put it in. So that's been fun. <laughs> I've gotten no, aces no a couple of times that way. You got to be careful of the growers market. I've gotten a couple of insects. <laughs> Infections. You like have the, in there, Marty. What's that? You say you have onions growing? Yeah, green onions. Yep, lots of them. Be careful. Uh, you find it all? What? Do, do your onions affect any of your fish? I don't think so. I didn't ask them though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think so. Why? Why do you think they would? I was thinking of uh, uh, the acidity of them. Oh, I don't know. I never thought about it, I guess. Um, but, you know, they seem to do fine. I've grown green onions in pretty much every system I've had for about the last four and a half years now. So The only, the only plant, to my knowledge, that's dangerous to grow in the system like that is yucca. Right. Is who? Yucca. Yucca, Y-U-C-C-A. Oh, they also call it, um, what do they call it in Jamaica? Um, it begins with a C. Cassava. So, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, that has sa uh, sa saponins in it, I think it's called. Um, soponins, saponins. And the saponins are super, super fish toxic, like super fish toxic, even in microdoses. So. Same thing with yucca extract. Like if you're using soil amendments or even like a bloom boost or anything like that or some silica additives I'm noticing lately have, I think I've seen two silica additives in California that had yucca extract in it and mycorrhizae uh, boosters can sometimes have yucca in it. There's all things you've got to be careful with with fish. You definitely nuke your fish with, with the yucca extract. In fact, in, in California and uh, the West Coast, the Native Americans used to – I um, make a concentrate out of the juice when they press it to make flour and they would use that the concentrate they'd throw it in the river and they'd get the all the dead salmon that would float to the surface they'd actually use it as a fishing method so that's how well it works in small doses if you can use it in a river it's going to kill your closed loop system pretty quickly <laughs> 
just to give you an idea on dosage. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Obviously, in a river, that's <laughs> way higher uh, dosage. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> so that's why it's duck extracts a, a one to watch out for. But yeah, it's interesting to see you working with the hormones and stuff and testing it out. For those that don't know, um, aquaponic dummy does a way different method than pretty much anybody else that does aquaponic growing. He does a uh, aeroponic root method with pretty much sprinkler heads to, um, to keep from getting clogged, which is pretty dope. And he has some great videos on his channel. Definitely go check it out um, if you're looking to learn more on that stuff. Um, Sounds like they'll work yeah, here, you're, if you're there, why don't you show the video real quick of it, or a little display of it. I don't know if I can get inside here. What's a sweet shirt? <laughs> I'm going to run out of power. <laughs> Don't drop your phone. I actually shut off. I had to shut off all the pumps because they were pretty loud. I got uh, individual shutoffs for every every row. Nice. Is that irrigation pipe? Say what? Is that like spaghetti irrigation pipe? Is that what that is? Like a large, large scale uh, irrigation pipe? Ah. Uh, I use uh, PEX, uh, like pressurized pipe for your house. Right. And uh, I, I mean, all the crimping rings, I have all the tools already, so it worked out pretty well. Hey, I'm a big fan of using what you got. Yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> well, right now, uh, the whole room is, is uh, this particular room is my own personal garden. Um, I didn't, I, I'm not going into the other rooms. I didn't want to put other people's medicine on on video right so and it's basically all under construction anyway so it's uh we'll get there eventually eventually i'll do a full walkthrough and you'll be able to see everything right on now you're in maine is that right where you Maine, living? yeah yeah i thought so maine allows uh six flowering plants per patient and 12 vegging plants per patient and anything uh, under 12 inches by 12 inches is considered uh, seedling, even if it's a clone. Uh, and you can have unlimited. So uh, that's that's basically the laws here. You can, uh, as a caregiver, you can have up to, um, like uh, Mike was saying there, you can have up to five patients, very similar. Uh, so uh, you can have up to. Uh, um, you can have well in one building. Right now, okay, it's kind of confusing. It's a kind of gray area in Maine um, where uh, they really haven't figured out exact laws right yet. But from what I understand, you can have an, uh, an unlimited number of caregivers in one location as long as they live in the same building. Uh, so, um, but you can't have uh, more than one caregiver in one location. Right, that's pretty similar to here in Oregon now too, the way the way that it's set up. So we can have six flowering. Um, and our definition used to be anything less than 12 inches was considered, was the only thing that was considered an immature plant. But recently they did change it. So now if it's not in flower, then it, it's not in flower basically is what it comes down to. Um, so you can have plants over a foot tall that aren't uh, that aren't in flower, so that that really makes a big difference. And you can have an unlimited number of them, so that definitely helps out a lot um, in terms of you know just production and selection, and um, uh, for people to grow outdoors to be able to get them as large as possible before before they go out. You know, a lot of a lot of people like to you know veg a number of plants over the winter time and get them as big as possible and and then put them outside and let them grow full season outside and they get these big like 20 footers. And uh, so that really helps them be able to, uh, um, I guess, be able to, to be more productive in the same space because they have less regulation. Now there are other things that they passed at the same time, which sort of sucked. 
um, for the medical part of it. But, you know, that was, you know, the same at the same time that they put in all of this or started all the stuff about the limiting of, uh, of dosages and edibles like we talked about before. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't all great, but we did get some stuff. And that was one thing. Uh, that's probably the only like incredibly useful thing I think that we got out of uh, the last set of legislation that went through was that uh, pretty much everything else was more regulation on top of it. Like now we have to report on every seed we pop and every clone we have. And um, every month we have to report like, you know, it, it, it's only if you're growing for somebody else. So like, I don't have to report on my own plants, but like you have rooms for other patients, you would have to right. report every month in their reporting system. Um, you know, how big the plants are, um, or if you harvest it, what the flower is and where it goes and basically um, account for every aspect of the plant throughout its entire life and where it goes um, from beginning to end. So it's, uh, it's very cumbersome now to, as opposed to like last year where my buddy got kicked off of his grow spot and I said, oh, hey, I've got room in my backyard. Let's just slap your six plants out back. You can grow them out there and you can still have some medicine because you didn't have a spot to grow. Well, now if I, even if I wanted to do that for my buddy, that means once a month I have to, you know, somebody has got to go out there and measure all of his plants and do all of this stuff to be able just to have a, a, somebody else's plants just on my property. So, um, you know, it definitely, uh, puts a lot of people in a tough spot to be able to, uh, you know, people that don't have the place to grow their own medicine that, you know, a friend was just helping them out. Now that it puts that, that grower in a spot to where somebody's going to have to do the work and you, they also raised all the rates. So now everything is 200 bucks more. And even the grower, if I have somebody on my property growing like that same buddy, if you wanted to grow here again, it would cost me an extra 200 bucks a year just to have him to be able to grow there, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're growing for say five patients, then that's a thousand bucks. And, uh, you know, most of the time growers aren't working off of huge margins unless they're, you know, I guess greedy to start with. But, um, for, for those people that, that were working on small margins, they just get smaller and smaller and, the people that are reasonable get pushed out of the market and patients get less quality and it, it definitely becomes an issue. Um, so <clears throat> it's a uh, okay. here. Sorry, go ahead. I to cut it off, but I got to go. Oh, okay. So I didn't know how to you handle you on, uh, that today being a little bit uh, less talkative than usual. I know. Uh, so I didn't know I didn't know how you guys wanted to handle it, but uh, it's uh, ten forty six where I am right now, and I'm head <laughs> upstairs. Sure, yeah. Do you want to uh, do you want to pick somebody from chat? I think um, or no phone here. I can't see anything. All right, we'll give it away. It's actually a YouTuber in here we've talked to about a lot of them. Silver Arm Thirty Two. He's a guy who tunes in a lot, and he's got a great channel. Go check him out on YouTube. He's actually has probably, I think, the oldest aquaponic cannabis channel that's dedicated to aquaponic cannabis and aquaponic cannabis growing on the Internet that I'm aware of. If somebody else knows of an older one, please let me know, but I think he is the oldest. He is one from when I started looking, he was the only one I could find, other than yeah. like some blog yeah. post from a dude in the – 90s that was like injecting the roots with hormones and shit it was weird I, i've you've seen that yeah all right anyway so thanks guys for tuning in check out my uh my channel ap meds um uh aquaponic cannabis growers group i think you can find all of us but mike in there hopefully we can get get him in there also and uh yeah, so check out the videos. I haven't filmed much of my outdoor because I it's still sort of in limbo with the county. I didn't talk about that much tonight, but we'll get into that next time. But I can't take any videos of it right now, so it's uh it's in limbo. But uh, 
expanding on the indoor. It'll be twice as big, so tune in for that. And, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. It was good to get online with you, Aquaponic Dummy. I hadn't, uh, hadn't been hey, on with you yet. I appreciate it. Thanks for staying up late. Over Every there. It's I only 8 o'clock here, man. I'm still <laughs> going to go watch some TV. It's a totally time it. for the rest of us, man. Totally forgot that was the episode that Marty wasn't able to make it. That we we like scrambled last minute and and got uh, some really good guests that night. So, uh, Mike, do you want to go ahead and plug anything that you got? Um, you want to mention or groups or um, you know how people can reach out to you and stuff? Yeah, you just hit me on Facebook and uh, Michael McShane, and uh, we'll go from there. I don't really, uh, you know, I've been around to see all these groups here locally and. Uh, you know, they're really, I'll be honest with you, they're just not my kind of people. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I just uh, haven't really uh, found anything here that I like. So um, I'm just kind of a loner right now. And, uh, uh, you know, let me know if you'd like to do more on this. Uh, and as far as uh, your production, I really appreciate you guys uh, having me on. And, you um, you know, uh, like I say, um, I'm always on Facebook, and, uh, you know, I'm blasting, uh, you know, somebody that's uh, trying to grab our marijuana on a regular basis. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. Keep the energy up. Let's meet you. Do um, you want to tell, tell us about your shop and plug your shop there, bud? Since, uh... Um. Van Buren Hydroponics, uh, Van Buren Hydroponics in Van Buren, Maine. Um, you can stop by. Uh, what we do is we uh, we price match uh, reputable online retailers, so there's no there's nothing cheaper. Um, yeah, any anytime, any anything you need for all your aquaponic and uh, uh, growing needs, stop by and see us. And that's the place that has the weed growing in the window, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> read that, huh? <laughs> yeah. City came down on me pretty hard. So for <laughs> another time, inside you. Yeah. So and, um, y'all can reach me at potentponics.com or potentponics on Gmail um, or Twitter or Facebook or fucking anything else. Um, and yeah, I'll be in California. If anybody else actually stopped by and saw fish ganja guys grow, um, uh, if you guys are familiar with fish ganja guy on our YouTube here over on Duke Grows, um, if anybody else is out in Cali and wants to hang out, I'll be going back and forth in the state for the next couple of weeks. So, uh, between different jobs. So if you guys are, um, looking or want to hang out, um, shoot me a message and I'll come by and we'll hang out. Cool. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Um, we'll put some links and stuff in the channel to, uh, if you guys have any questions. And um, we'll be back to a normal schedule now. Sorry about the delay. And um, you know, we might even have an extra episode or two. I got some other guests that are pretty cool. So don't be surprised if we have a surprise episode or something like that in between the normal Thursdays. All right. So yep. have a good one, everybody. And thanks for joining us. Have a good one. Good night. Hey everybody, welcome to the Growing With Fishes podcast. We have a pretty full house tonight. It's going to be a good show. Um, our guest is having a couple of last minute problems getting his connection working, but I think he's got, I think he's going to get it here shortly. So um, we, uh, uh, we'll have him join us shortly. Um, today's, uh, one of our main guests today is Michael McShane. He's a cancer and HIV survivor. He's been using can uh, cannabis oil um, for a long time. He helped pioneer cannabis oil production out in Michigan. Um, he's got a bunch of new stuff to talk about, um, and that'll be pretty cool to have. Um, we also have uh, Malik Spider. Uh, he's going to be here talking to us about um, uh, breeding and uh, a bunch of other fun stuff. Uh, he's got some seeds to give away before the end of the show, um, so that'll be pretty awesome. Um, we have uh, Aileon, uh from the forums. If you guys are, you know, part of the aquaponic cannabis group or any of the other aquaponic groups, um, you probably know who he is. Um, we also have Fish Ganja Guy and uh, Brian Grow. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, 
Malik, do you want to uh, go first? Do you want to talk to us a little bit about what you do and uh, what you've been up to? All right. Uh, I started out in this growing community with uh, Dude Grows Crew. Shout out to them. Fish Ganja guys in there with me, and uh, we stay real active in that community. And I was lucky enough to uh, find myself working for Subcool from TGA Genetics now, helping hit the YouTube channel, produce content, uh, come up with platforms, do their live shows. And, and here in Michigan, I'm right by Galactic Garden, so I've been working with them as well. And they're uh, the Michigan distributors of TGA Genetics, and things are going awesome. And it's all possible through online and uh, social media and Dude Grows Crew and wonderful podcasts like this. So. Thanks for having me, guys. Super stoked. No, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. Anytime, dude. I'm happy. To, I want to get into some capillary action and uh, do a root zone chat here in a second when, it, when it's... <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think uh, between all of us, there might be one person, uh, Steve, that uh, knows aquaponics pretty well. So... Can't hear you there, Steve. Hope you're on mute, Steve. Um, there's our guest. Uh, it looks like he finally joined as well. You there, Again. Michael? Uh, finally, man. Jeez, oh, Pete. Welcome. <laughs> hey there, guys, ladies, gentlemen. What's Glad up? To see Glad to have you. Good to be here. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I had, had to run over there for a minute. Get a handful of stuff, you know. Do you, uh, he's a little bit uh, limited on time. Do you mind if we switch gears real quick, Malik? Is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 100%. Uh, hey, hey, Michael, do you want to talk to us a little bit about um, uh, a little bit about you and uh, what you've been up to? We had you on the show uh, once a long time ago, and um, it's been nice to have you uh, talk a little bit about that and you know, um, you know, kind of an update with your health and how cannabis has been helping you. And then I know you've been working uh, with a, a case out in Michigan. Um, uh, I know you wanted to talk about that as well. Yeah, I do. Um, well, I've been, uh, I guess that was back uh, right around the time we were voting for Prop 64 yep. uh, in that time frame. And um, we... Uh, uh, let up and um, since that point uh, you know quite frankly I, I kind of took a hit on my health and uh, um, I kind of a, a, a more of a, um, a struggle really than anything and uh, uh, I've been using the cannabis oil you know quite a bit for cancer and HIV for uh, seven years I think by now and uh I was just trying, uh, really trying to hang on, and I was, uh, you know, not not doing too well. And uh, I don't know if you saw some of the uh, pictures later last year uh, on Facebook, but um, I mean, this cancer finally uh, just took took over, and um, it was a lot bigger than I thought. And um, well, I was really fortunate enough to. Uh, it was a kind of an outreach, really, and I, I put a video out on this, but uh, I was at a, at a Starbucks restaurant doing my missionary work, and I see a guy with really bad cancer, and I walked up to him, and I said, hey, uh, you know, do you have cancer? <laughs> and he said, yeah, and um, I do, and I said, well, I, I don't want to pry into your business, but I went on with my spiel about the oil and all that, and you know, long story short, he, he, you know, he told me he was going to do this new treatment that, um, you know, I'd not heard of and um, a medical treatment from the hospital, from Western medicine. Uh, I, you know, I, I cautioned him and told him not to try it. It would kill him. And uh, it was just another version of chemotherapy. But, um, you know, he said, that's what he wanted to do. And so, uh, you know, I said, well, I owe you a cup of coffee. And so, uh, we kind of separated at that point, and um, I wished him good luck. And I, I saw him six months later, and he was pretty well all healed up. And he, um, uh, you know, obviously got my attention. And I said, well, what did you do, uh, Greg? And uh, he told me he did that immunotherapy that he told he had mentioned to me um, 
you know, uh, six months earlier. And I, I saw that it obviously it worked. And, you know, what is a, immunotherapy? And he says, well, it, as far as I know, it, it uses your own immune system to go after the cancer and it, and it healed it up. And when I talked to him, you know, he had a real similar history that I, you know, he had the, the, the chemo and the radiation and all the surgeries and all these things, radical neck dissection. I mean, that doesn't even sound right. Uh, but, um, you know, there he was all, all healed up. And um, I asked him, well, did, did you get sick when you took it? I mean, was it, was it painful or, and he said, no, not at all. You know, it, it didn't really affect him and he just got better. And um, so, you know, my next question was, well, how do you get it and how much does it cost? And, uh, oh, again, long story short, it's about $1,000 a day and uh, it takes 10 months to do it. And I've been doing it, I don't know, four or five. And uh, it's hard to tell, but, um, you know, my condition uh, is improved dramatically. Um, the the nose area is all, you know, he, it's, it's healing up instead of getting worse, which is a a clear sign of um, success and um, and it feels and looks a lot like the oil treatment really and now the immune kind of <coughs> the same I just did really and my system was is just too too far gone and I should you know should have prefaced it by saying that I haven't taken any HIV medication in a long time and you know, I don't believe in that either. So that's been the latest and greatest. And, um, you know, it's what I've seen, in, um, you know, from this has been a, just an amazing uh, comeback with this um, uh, immunotherapy. And I, I went down to UCSD in uh, La Jolla and I, I got it gifted to me. I, I went and did almost like a shark, uh, shark Tank Live <laughs> episode with these group of doctors and I told them you know where I'd been and all my experiences and all the things I had tried and that didn't work and that you know I really um, I was I was dying and I needed to uh, try this stuff and if they could get me on it I would do it and uh, it, it's working so um, the oil has been uh, you know I don't mean to take over the whole show but the the uh, oil has been uh, you know real hard to get uh, you know since medical marijuana uh, has been, you know, really, I think my word is hijack, um, hijack out from underneath us. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, the oils and, uh, the things that really work are being either outlawed or minimized to the point of not being able to work, you know, not being process capable. And, and so there, there again, the, the pharmaceutical company wins and gets the deal, you know, they get the business. So, you know, that's, that's another thing. And, you know, that really bothers me. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll take a break. <laughs> well, what print can you, because I was just discussing this earlier, and since I've not had to get into it yet, and I've been busy with my own projects and, and haven't really got into the CBD oil so much. Was there a percentage? Is there a percentage on that CBD oil that you're using? Well, when I do oil, um, you know, I, I made oil for uh, several years back in Michigan. And, um, I uh, was uh, also in the paint and coating industry that, uh, you know, but they went along well together and uh, separating resin and curing it and all the things that we do is uh, what, I, what I did. And so I was able to get out of one thing, one industry and uh, get into something a lot better. And uh, I didn't do anything really with CBD because I didn't grow it. And uh, there really wasn't a lot of CBD back east, at least, you know, um, in the first few years of the medical program in Michigan, uh, wasn't a popular uh, strain, and um, I used mostly indicas. And um, you know, when I was right. uh, making the oil, I would use uh, preferably uh, you know three or four kinds. I'd go out and buy four quarters if I could, and uh, make the oil, you know, from a combined effort of a you know multi multi strain um, or composite, you know. Um, so, uh, not knowing exactly what cannabinoids to that we needed or what we had, <laughs> the double blind study, uh, we, uh, you know, just hit you with as, with, with as much as we could and um, uh, as many cannabinoids as possible was the theory. So, um, 
you know, that's, uh, that's where that uh, um, came from. <clears throat> that was the direction at that time. So I, I didn't, I don't have a lot of experience with the CBD. Oh, okay. Um, well, thanks. Uh, so I, I feel bad for you having to go, you want to process something, you have to go buy four quarters. I can't even imagine having to go through that. Yeah, well, um, you know, I uh, also had, I'm going to power up here if I can. Um, I had uh, my own uh, patients in uh, the area that I was taking care of, and um, I just didn't have the bandwidth to be able to do everything for everybody. So on the oil deals, I would go out and, uh, and, and, and procure the uh, flour, uh, you know, generally outside of my uh, grow room. Yeah, thanks. I don't know if I'm going to lose power here. Um, I'm going to try to get somebody to help me. It's not my phone, so I'm a little at odds here. <clears throat> well, I know it's got to be. You guys still there? Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking it's got to be hard because I know in Michigan right now, without no regulation or nothing, it's hard to get in oils that are consistent of any type. Because it's basically becoming a free for all in some states, isn't it? Oh yeah. Because I know they they're yeah. getting regulating more in Colorado and stuff with the edibles and such the last couple three years that they didn't do it first. And now all the other states need to catch up. But I'm surprised that the newer states that have allowed medical marijuana and and you know and oils and stuff aren't 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 taking that model from out west where they found out they have to register or regulate it to some extent. Uh, I need you know, power. So, it's, so it's quality and you know it's clean and quality. Like we talked to a couple weeks ago about guys going to you're buying buying medical marijuana from a pharmacy and finding bug poop in it. You know, uh, just not cool. You know, all it should be all inspected and checked. And make sure it is quality and clean. <laughs> cool. Okay. Sorry. Hey, I got power. I got power again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Jeez. Do you want to talk a little bit about the court case you were helping with back in Michigan? Well, Since you know, we that, that, yeah, Michigan. that ties in. And uh, what that was, was um, I got an opportunity, uh, a friend of mine from uh, the, now he's up in the upper peninsula of Michigan, uh, out in the middle of nowhere. And um, he is an oil maker that uh, <clears throat> goes back to day one uh, with me and taught me how to make oil. So, um, he really uh, was near and dear to my heart, and um, it was somebody that I approached, you know, in a very desperate state to, uh, you know, help me save my life, and he did. So uh, <clears throat> he had uh, encountered a, um, a charge up in uh, Escanaba, Michigan, and uh, he's facing a judge next month, or um, on the 14th, I think, of June, and uh, he called me and said, would you please... Um, send this judge a letter and, and try to, you know, um, give him an idea of what I'm all about and, you know, uh, you know, a reference letter, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, show what kind of character this man has. And so I did. And uh, I pumped out this letter. Uh, and I'm not a big letter writing guy. And uh, as a matter of fact, I hate writing letters. But um, I went right home and I wrote it. And it, it just seemed to hit on all on all levels. It, you know, um, it gave the judge a good idea of um, you know who he was and who I was. And um, I told him that you know I had AIDS and cancer, and the guy saved my life. I mean, well, <laughs> what, where do we go from here? Uh, and that I you know I just thought he was a stand-up guy. And um, so this letter that I, I actually mailed the judge uh, was gone all around the internet. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's on my page, and it's almost a, it's really a, a, a blueprint, and what I call a, a template of, for, you know, really where our industry is, and what, you know, people like me is an example of, you know, the, the guy to have medical marijuana, the, you know, the Dennis Perones of the world, and, and um, all these people that, you know, have illnesses, uh, you know, need this, and, you know, we're being um, suppressed, and it all comes from the big pharmaceutical companies that want the oil for themselves. And, uh, you know, uh, 
you mentioned that a lot of these places, uh, you know, around the country, medical marijuana and, and the, the legalities and whatever. But really, you know, you look at California and we lost medical marijuana in regards to medibles um, with this Prop 64. You know, you got something with a 25 milligram uh, capacity limit on a medible. And I think you only put four or five in a six in a bag. So, you know, you, you, the most you're going to get out of a... Um, probably a 10 or $20 uh, purchase is uh, 150 milligrams. And, you know, for somebody that, with a real illness, um, that's not enough. So, uh, again, the oil, I've talked about the oil before. And, you know, it's a seven-year felony in San Diego County uh, to make oil. And that comes from the, um, the police, not the fire chief. And, oh, shit. You know, uh, and the reason that is, is that, you know, they're protecting, again, um, the pharmaceutical industry and you know in regards to fire safety um, you know I was a fire safety engineer in, in the paint business and I you know I've, I've been to a lot of fires and uh, you know I, I've been around that kind of that world and uh, you know that's that's really not you know the kind of dangers that we're you know facing you know here by making oil you know the proper way uh, and if you follow uh, guidelines to make the oil, it's really not dangerous and it can be controlled to the point where um, risk to um, uh, the people are, are, are very, very minimal, uh, if, if, if at all. So, um, you know, I don't know if you saw the uh, article today, uh, but there was a company that did extractions in uh, the San Diego area. It wasn't actually downtown but there's one of the suburbs and um last year they got raided um they were making all the extractions for people like bang chocolate and you know these are different people that were doing the medibles and uh, they got raided um and uh they took all the guy the, this guy's money and uh he had 20 employees i think and you know shook everybody down in the parking lot took all their money and i don't know 150,000 bucks worth of um uh, money, uh, straight up cash, and all of his equipment, and uh, he just won that back. By long story short, he he wins this this money back, the civil forfeiture booty. I think it was last week. Today, this Bonnie, I think her name is Bonnie Dukakis, um, files charges, criminal charges. So she replaced the money she stole. <laughs> with this vindictive nature of um, then go ahead and file and charges on this guy. And I think probably everybody in the building, who knows? And so, so now, um, you know, you know, he doesn't get his really, doesn't get his money back. Now he got to give the money to the lawyer, you know? So uh, another big fantasy, but uh, another big ripoff is what it is. And um, it's, it, you know, really uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's racketeering is what it is. And uh, it should be charged federally. Uh, and these people should go to federal prison for that uh, because you would and I know I would. So, but, but that's what's going on with this oil and, you know, you know it's legal and this and that. And, um, you know, what's legal is um, selling high powered, high dollar flour at, at some of these proprietary uh, locations that, again, guess who owns those? same people that are running around arresting people, you know, and um, striking up these behind the scenes deals, you know, people like American for safe access and, and those kind of things. So, you know, I can go on and on and on, but, you know, the oil industry and, and the availability is strained at best. And, uh, you know, to, to, I came out here to make it and uh, to literally come out here to be the, you know, one of the people that, you know, you could rely on for good oil. And um, I'll tell you what, I mean, the liability uh, is, is as high as, almost as high as the gain, you know, so uh, it's a tough, a tough nut. And uh, it's, it's really, uh, it, it really upsets me a lot to think that, you know, we had such a great opportunity uh, with cannabis and we not, we not only blew it, but we sold it out to the same bastards and took it away to, in the beginning. So you know, I'm I'm just a little bit wound up about that. That's like six states got Marlboro cannabis cigarettes packaged in a white package with a green pot leaf. It looks like a menthol package, but it's got a pot leaf. 
and they're selling for some ungodly amount out there in six states. I think most of them are out west too. But yeah, Marlboro now has has cannabis cigarettes. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Exactly what you're talking about. Kind of. Sort of. I just want to welcome another guest who uh, just showed up a minute ago. Uh, be patient from the Dude Gross crew. No stranger to uh, Malik and myself. Welcome, B. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Thanks for having me. Hello, hey. welcome. Good to see you. What's up? Uh, What's up, Malik? Not much. What's up, Leia? Oh, uh, you know, just getting ready to have some dabs. So, uh, um. Uh, thanks, Michael. We'll, we'll uh, yep, um, talk. Uh, we're going to switch to um, Malachi for a second, for a little bit, Absolutely. and let him talk yep. about his stuff, and then uh, and then we'll uh, um, go back. So. Michael, I hope you feel better soon, man. Thanks. Thanks for your story, Michael. Yeah, thanks, yeah, absolutely. Back. Absolutely, Michael. So others may live, baby. That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's, I love what we're going to be doing as well, so we should uh, link up and talk later later on off air. Okay. Sure. But yeah, yeah, guys, I've just been um, staying busy and Dude Grows Crew, active, working with Sub Cool and uh, helping the plat put the platforms together for the show, get guests similar to this. And uh, on my own, I got a little breeding project going and working out with a Plushberry male, and I'm hitting a Gorilla Glue number four, and I'm hitting a nine pound hammer, and I'm making all those seeds just to give away uh, at the Cannabis Cup in Michigan, at the TGA booth, I'm going to give them away, and to people in, in like Dude Grows Crew or other people that need them online and social media, and, and it's uh, really awesome seeing people grow out your stuff and be able to contribute, so... That sounds awesome. We got some customers in Michigan. You need to give me a link so I can hook them up with that where you're going to be. Yeah. And yeah, we can get the TGA Genetics into their stores too. Or absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to be running PWK here pretty soon. Right. <laughs> be patient. That's good shit. Right. Hip hop rubber percussion. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, that started as an inside joke with some of us DGC, and it just kind of snowballed, and Malik just took it to a whole other <laughs> level, and now it's an actual thing that ex that exists, and it's fantastic. It's even yeah. Cool. That's what's up, man. I mean, you can't name something yourself, but if your buddies are going to name something, then shoot. Right. Cool. What are you talking about? You can totally give yourself your own nickname. <laughs> 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 so, um, so you do some uh, some breeding? Yep, uh, I've done three breeding projects. The first two I did uh, just just branching and selected a few branches on each strain, and uh, got a you know a few hundred seeds each round. And then this last round I'm doing right now, I'm in the middle of that should be done in like four weeks. I let the male run for about. 30 days in flower, and then he opened his pollen sacks all the way, and he was throwing pollen for about four days, and then, uh, <laughs> then I killed him and took him out. So I'm hoping to get mostly mature seeds, nice tiger stripe. Awesome. Do you want to um, tell people out there who maybe haven't um, tried to breed their own strains before, maybe um, uh, how they go about it? You know, how, how would someone do it if they're looking to get started? Absolutely. And all this information I heard from, uh, or shout out to Kilo Watt and Dude Grows Crew. He walked me through everything I did and all of Dude Grows Crew and buddies in YouTube. But just checked every Absolutely. last step out. So anything Kilo Watt's good, did you see? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, yep, yeah, just referencing info. And uh, he just told me to take the male plant and I separated it into a separate closet. Is this how babies are made? Is that what we're talking <laughs> about? Now? Right. Yes, totally, dude. <laughs> Cannabis babies. Right. So. When, when are we going to get to the money shot? Right. So 28 days in flower and in, in the mail uh, until you start feeling like the pound sex are starting to open. And then separate them totally out to a closet or some other room if you don't want the pollen to bust in that area. And um, keep your life cycle on 12-12. 
uh, about, I'd go another week until the pollen sacs are completely open. Just check it out. You don't even need much airflow after the 28 days. And, you know, you're only just going to get the pollen sacs open to collect some pollen, kill that male. And then uh, you can use a paintbrush and just brush on a few branches if you're going to do it that way. And then the other way, they just leave the male to run right with the female. And then uh, you want the pistils on the female to be showing about three weeks into flower. Nice, healthy, so you get a good amount of seeds. Let the male bust, and then I'd kill them off after a few days so you don't get a bunch of uh, premature seeds. But so you're painting, not professional, I'm just getting started. When you're painting the pollen onto the females, are, do you just paint it on the white hairs, or, uh, or are you painting it on what? Yeah, I just paint on the pistols, the little white hairs, correct. Okay. Yep, got uh, two rounds doing branching. And then this last one, I did the total breed tent. I have a couple of videos on my channel. And, yeah, what's, uh, your, what's your channel? Um, I'll, I'll post it up in the description. All right. Malik Spider, S-P-Y-D-R. And I'll throw a copy for you right here. And then um, his uh, his seeds are in the uh, in the description as well. Um, yep, this is a TGA Genetics Subcool, my boss, and uh, Subcool 420. Upside down. upside down. Upside down. There we go. Woo! But yeah. Every, all the good strains: Plush Berry, Nine Pound Hammer, Corkle, Alchemy. They got a lot of new crosses on um, Gorilla Glue 4 times Space Queen, Cosmic Glue, it's called. Oh, yeah. But what's going on with you guys? Fish? <laughs> um, not too much, man. I'm just uh, I'm still running through this round right now. I just sent you a few pictures a little while ago of uh, my three keeper phenos of the uh, okay. crystal. And uh, let's see. Just throwing out some really good stuff right now. Fish are all happy and alive. Plants are doing well. Um, lights on both sides of my study are kicking ass. Um, black dogs putting on some serious frost right now. Spectrum can oh. also put on the frost. And uh, to anybody who's been watching my study, I just want to remind everybody that I'm not doing it based on weight. What I'm doing is I'm waiting until things are cured and then I'm sending them off to labs because I really want to know what that difference in spectrum is going to do for potency and the terpene production and the profile that it comes with. So this is after harvest, give it a month, and then things are going to go into the labs and I'll be posting the uh, lab results online and uh, they're on the YouTube channel and on Instagram. So we'll definitely see what's going on. But yeah, everything's been great. Thank you for asking. That makes me feel special. <laughs> Be patient. What's going, what's going on, on, brother? What's up over there, bro? How's the garden going? That's pretty good. You know, just actually getting ready to flip here in a little bit. Uh, get ready to toss that new millennium decision in there. That just makes it so much easier hit it once maybe twice and i mean stretch is cut down by 10 15 percent and they go from oh veg time to oh flower time in days instead of weeks nice what are you uh what yeah. are you growing right now let's see i've got i'm down to what uh, i've got two different phenos of the bread by 42 northern lights and g13 cross Real nice hardy stuff. One's super indica. One's got a nice, looks like a nice hybrid balance going. And uh, feminized Dynafem, original man, original amnesia, excuse me, and uh, Bloomberg Chemdog 4, which I believe is Chemdog crossed with green crack. And then some, just because I, I can't get away from it, some bag seed wonderful, because every now and again, bag seed just does it for you. And I've had good luck the last few runs with it. So I found one that I really liked. Had a nice stem rub, nice leaf going, leaf pattern. I'm going to run it, see what happens. And for people who aren't uh, really sure what a stem rub is, would you mind describing that to the viewers? So something I like to do after they've been sexed and you know, you know, what you're actually going to be working with. You know, if you're, if you're not running a carbon filter in veg, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll open up your tent or walk in your room and go, oh, it smells like cannabis in here. And that's because, you know, there is a small amount of resin and terpene production being put out by by vegging even small immature plants and you can use a just take your thumb and your forefinger and and preferably with gloves on rub a, a section of stem 
and put that straight up to your fingers and you're going to get a good idea of what that plant's terpene profile is going to be like later in life and that gives you a good indication usually of what what kind of quality you're going to be working with yeah okay right on man well and now everybody learned something new today i think oh well some of us i have a I have a question. Has anyone here ever heard of or why, know why or anything of stem splitting? I saw someone with a post where they stuck a knife in the center of the stalk and it was like... If you look at my Instagram page, I have, for my last grow, I stuck a Bic lighter, a mammoth, uh, mammoth microbes Bic lighter into a stem split in my, uh, my Rude Boy OG. <laughs> you know crushing stems you know get a little too hard sometimes what will end up happening is the it'll just it'll split almost into like two or four separate sections and you'll be able to like physically put you know there'll be a hole there but it doesn't seem to, it doesn't hinder growth it just pushes past it regenerates it and keeps on going and it just uh, seems to you know it's a method of super cropping as best i understand it and it works for me i do the do it all the time so Wait, so explain how explain what it does again. Uh, I'm still lost on. I, I use it as a super cropping technique where I'm gonna take the the strongest, you know, top and I'm gonna pinch it just below oh. where new new growth is, and I'm gonna uh, you know send that hormone signal. Other than just bushing out the lower nodes, it's also gonna strengthen that portion of the stem because it's sending all of that to to fix repair that damage. It just seems to me like a huge possible way for getting fungus in the center of your plant. That's the biggest thing that it just, I'm still, I'm not convinced that splitting the stock. I'm not base. saying it's, it's a, a good idea. I'm actually oh. looking to do away with it. I started using OG springs very recently. And uh, if I don't have to do any more super cropping and I can, you know, save that extra few days and veg or, and, and not have to worry about those, that stress being able to trigger auxins and, horm and hormonal signals without stress signals, I'm all for it. And I'm going to be trying one of those or a couple of those OG springs on the recommendation of JR Token and uh, Be Patient in my next run. But I just want to let you know, B, you, you can uh, super crop somebody without really opening it up and exposing it to molds and stuff like that. No, I know. I, I I tend to be a little overzealous with it. I'll be the first to admit that. I mean, I actually I I lost a, a decent top off of a plant the other day because I went a little too hard on it. Yeah. It's one of those uh, you know oh, when gentle squeeze. You don't gotta choke a bitch. I mean, come on. You know, it, it, I, it comes from those the days of you know the old school production growing where you're just you're trying to get as much out of what you could. And back in the days of of low plant counts when we were trying to be as legal as possible and still push out weight. You're doing everything you can to every plant to maximize it and you know back then we just didn't know it was like hey this this does this cool keep doing it <laughs> okay i have faith in you i just <laughs> didn't know if anyone had a good explanation other than just trying to stress the plant out to increase chirps or something well, B was generally just trying to make a lighter holder on his plant for him, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I never lost my lighter after that, so. It needs a lighter leash. You have, you have the plant right there. <laughs> I've heard people scoring, if it like, in, I don't know, I think I heard it one time, somebody scoring a stem towards the end or something to maybe shock it into releasing more resins. I don't know. Interesting. Uh, but something something I found interesting was I, saw, I can't remember if I saw this on Instagram or something the other day. People are selling now lacquered, uh, like stocks and you know like the bases of, of plants. Like I saw one that was uh, that was actually subcool grown. That was yeah, Mendo Dope. They're on live yeah, right now. Yeah, the resistant. Yeah, they uh, they're doing stock art where they're like yeah, badass like finishing and making. They, that's what they they actually got a whole microphone stand. Yeah, I've uh, seen that. That's cool. That they can dab with too, or there's a dab thing. But yeah, so yeah, <laughs> that's dope. So yeah, stocks can be money makers. <laughs> so what about our fearless leader here, Steve? Again, thank you for having us. Um, yeah, what's Steve, what's you do? Like yeah. in your life right now. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah, so I've been working on a couple of different projects. 
Um, I'm, might be going up to Northern California, but again, I might be staying down in San Diego. I'm not sure yet. Um, and yeah, eventually Canada here in a couple months, um, Puerto Rico at some point in between. Um, yeah, all over the place. I don't really have any timelines at the moment. Um, as far as anything, I have a, a couple of important, I'll know more after the end of June. So Do you know when, um, the rescheduled, uh, aquaponics course might be no we'll figure it out once marty's uh marty's situation we had to postpone it because marty's uh kid was born on saturday morning so um yeah obviously we needed him uh if we we're gonna do it together so uh we're gonna postpone it and then once uh you know we're gonna give it a couple of weeks for him to get uh used to the baby and all and then we'll have him we'll get reschedule that we're also we had so much demand from australia i think we're going to also do a separate class um on australian hours so you know if you want to take that class because you're up at weird hours um we'll also offer that um, or if you're in australia um there was enough of you <laughs> that wanted a, a class to make it worth it um you know we had, we're kind of not 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 mean it that way but i mean like we were pretty surprised though there was a uh, you know almost 10 people that were running a, a class uh, from Australia on Australian times so where, you know, that we'll do that as well. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, and until we're going to give Marty a, a week or two and, you know, a couple of weeks to, to get used to having the new munchkin. So it's got a, a new little clone. <laughs> nice. Now, um, how do people sign up for the, uh, the course uh, once it's been, uh, rescheduled oh uh yeah so you, if you have a if you signed up for before uh, you already got an email but um if not um you know you can go to the website over at uh, uh potentponics.com click on shop and and the the class is on there and uh does coupon code dude uh get us anything off or <laughs> no i gotta i gotta <laughs> figure out uh how coupon codes work we'll figure out something <laughs> <laughs> so right on man what uh what's new in um in your grow since i know your time is going to be limited soon oh me oh i already covered it fish are alive plants are healthy and um, crystal cookies coming that. down how long hours now what what'd you say what about your crystal cookies coming down in hours now uh yeah i'm counting down for sure um, but I've got one tiny little Vienna skunk, you know, that, um, is ahead of everything else. So it's coming down, uh, in the next few hours, but, uh, everything else is all pretty much timed up with the, everybody else. So they're all on for the same day. Do you want to talk about your, uh, ladybug genocide there? <laughs> uh, no, I'll be documenting that. Let's just say, um, I have a bet going with some people on whether or not uh, <laughs> the duct tape on certain areas of my tents are eating more ladybugs or certain lights that I have with fans on them are eating more. So I'll be uh, seeing it because I know for a fact that the lights with the fans, I've dumped out piles of corpses before. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I'll be keeping an eye on that at the end of the grow. Because I know that the ladybug population is going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we, when we laugh about this because it's funny, but at the end of the day, like, like, I, like I was explaining earlier, that, that really is a hazard. You know, if you release a couple, you know, a, a thousand predatory insects and they all end up in your light source and you have, Could actually you know, exactly that's my point when you mix when you mix living biology and electronics things catch on fire and that's that's a scary notion <laughs> very true so is what it is but uh yeah. just keeping an eye on things at least it's easy enough there's lots of different computer fan screens and stuff like that that are cheap that you can get um you know, for next to nothing at the computer store. Set up your, your micro center up there. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's you that. Can find me in trim jail. We can uh, troubleshoot some stuff. <laughs> when I'm in trim jail. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take twenty minutes off for a business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys be having the munchies and turn jail, taking 20 minutes off to go get some food? All right. Yeah, I treat my trimmers well. Free pizza. All right. See, I don't no, feel no, like no. I've never had a problem with trimming. I like trimming. I mean, it's a, yeah. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to enjoy the fruits of my labor. You know, like, it's, it's something. Red I trimmer don't dry trim, though. I, I well I you know I try to hang whole plants as much as possible now. Yeah. Uh, wet trim all day. Wet oh, trim. Oh, hang for be patient. Dry trim. Hmm. Dry trim means more hash. I like I don't know about that. that. You mean more hash? <laughs> well, more bubble know. hash. More, uh, more, squ more squishy. Yeah, but well, it's less on your weed. He's gonna knock more of it off on the trim process. You get right. like dry that's sip in the bottom of your thing. I don't know. That's why I just like taking the wet trim and then freezing it and then making it in the bubble. I find it yields a little bit better. Yeah, that's true. I just don't huh. have the room in the freezer. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm on limited space, so I still kind of work with what I can. Weird. Yeah, I've been. Uh, for those of you guys that didn't see my video, as I made a video a week or so ago, um, I've been turn, making bubble uh, out of trim and then trim into um, or the bubble into rosin. Man, the the seventy three and and twenty five bubble into rosin is the smoothest stuff. Terpy. <laughs> yeah, super terpy. Doesn't make you cough at all. Like just oh, sure. so good. Hey, and uh, just to go off of the weed talk for a minute, because I know we have someone that we haven't really spoken to that's uh, with us right now, and that's uh, oh, yeah, bro. Joshua. Yeah, what's up, guys? I'm here. Or alien. Hey, thank you again for joining us tonight. I don't want you to feel too neglected. Um, we're just uh, all in zone for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, tell us uh, how you got into aquaponics and um, what you got going on. Uh, I got into aquaponics back when I lived in Arizona because of uh, water problems and just trying to be a conservationist. I've always had a conservationist, uh, you know, attitude with uh, all things in life. And yeah, living in Arizona, it was just, it was, it wasn't exactly rocket science to say, hey, I need to try this. And uh, I didn't really try doing cannabis right off the bat. I was just doing, you know, your your normal leafy greens and your veggies and herbs and stuff. And uh, it worked so well that I was like, well, hey, why don't I just throw a seed of uh, some pot in here? And sure enough, you know, it, it came out and uh, it wasn't great the first time, uh, you know, because I, I didn't know anything about a dual root zone. I didn't know about other things that you have to you do have to pay attention to, like pests and stuff. Um, in aquaponics because you're working in a, a more moist environment and uh, you have a higher chance of molds and funguses and things and so you know it was all just a learning process and uh, over the years I don't I still consider myself an amateur because I don't make any money at what I do and I just grow for myself and uh, my wife and like uh, a couple years ago I was growing for my mom when uh, she Back, back before we passed here in Colorado. I live in Colorado now. Um, back before they passed recreational and uh, she had her medical license. So I was her caregiver. And uh, that was that was the way I grew all her, all her medicine was uh, with aquaponics just right in my, right in my little cabin that I was living in. And uh, using crawfish I found uh, was just awesome. I mean, I, I, I can't sing the praises of crawfish enough, I guess, but <laughs> Steve well, probably knows work. what I'm talking about there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, crawfish, I mean, you could get, you, you could pack them in, like literally pack them into your tank and they don't mind as long as the water is turbid enough that they don't fight each other because um, they are cannibals. But uh, I found that the, uh, 
the emulsions that come from it, all their shell casings and all their waste and uh, even just their dead bodies, is uh, it's just really great stuff. High in calcium, high in phosphorus, high in magnesium. Uh, the nitrogen is still in the system because they're still peeing and pooping in the water and the bacteria take care of that and turn it into plant soluble nitrates. And uh, so, but right now I'm not using any aquaponics because I'm having a water problem again. And uh, like I have to haul my water. So I've got, uh, I've got a, uh, garden out back that uh, I've been setting up to just be a, um, a no-till garden, basically wood chips and, you know, and earthworms and they take care of it. And uh, then I don't have to use as much water. Uh, I use probably, I'm figure like I haven't, I haven't, I just watered them today and it's been two weeks since the last time I watered them. So, and that was when I put them in and, uh, yeah, just been dealing with that. Eventually going to be setting up another indoor uh, grow as soon as I can afford another tent and uh, for flowering. And um, going to use crawfish again. Really looking forward to going to the local lake here and catching them. And that's another thing is uh, crawfish are just so easy to get. Like, you don't have to spend any money, you know. <laughs> so, And I'm a cheap bastard. So, yeah, that's my story. Right on. I dig it, man. I dig that. Well, just to follow up, because I work in the medical field, so when I hear people talk about medical things, I um, it always kind of catches me. Is your mom doing okay? Oh yeah, yeah, she does okay. Uh, you know, she she gave up her medical license because recreational passed, and she she was like, "Well, why should I spend money on getting another medical license?" I was like, "Well, because with a caregiver, your caregiver could grow you enough medicine." <laughs> And you won't have to worry about where you're really limited here in Colorado with what you can do. So like uh, and she didn't, she didn't see the point in it. She was like, Oh, I'll just get by on six plants. I guess she does, you know, so, you know, more power to her. <laughs> oh, shit. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I totally can understand why somebody would be like, well, I don't want to go through the hassle of getting the med card, but it does definitely come with some protections and benefits. Um, so if you right. Buy, I definitely tell people that's the way to go. Oh, it is, absolutely. If you have if you have something, you know, an actual illness, she has fibromyalgia, and it really, it, it really, really does help fibromyalgia patients. My wife also has fibromyalgia, and but she's having a flare-up, smoke a bowl and she's fine you know uh, the anxiety levels go down the pain comes down with that and onward and uh but yeah if if you have something that you you can get that medical license for definitely get it because you're just going to be so much more happier with the amount of product you can produce for yourself you know yeah no i feel you on that absolutely um, uh, how are you doing, Brian Grow? We haven't heard from you yet. Uh, pretty good, man. Uh, just been trying to wrap up a couple of things on the new breeding chamber and also wanted to, uh, thank the gentlemen who are on the podcast that were talking about breeding a little bit earlier because I'm fixing to go into doing it for my first time, just kind of as a hobby or whatever with, the. Uh, little aquaponic breeding chamber that I'm setting up. And then I've also been um, putting some time into a um, like a uh, mushroom CO2 production chamber that I'm trying to incorporate into my indoor aquaponic system. Nice. So I'm, I'm also uh, putting the finishing touches on that. I've uh, got a couple of air pumps that I'm going to be using to move the air around. So um, I'm going to be doing an unveiling of that hopefully within another week or two. I got, my, uh, I got a few jars that are colonizing right now. So um, I'm getting started on that, but uh, I'm kind of going into that for my first time as well. So hopefully, hopefully that turns out pretty well. But um, other than that, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Wow, that's super exciting, dude. 
the uh, fish panics and breeding in the same shot. I mean, as long as you have any fl plants flowering around it anyway, and I mean, how are you going to seal it off? Or I was curious. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. That's super my, cool. Maya, uh, you're talking about my breeding chamber? Yeah, yeah. For the fish panics one, that's awesome. A fish panics breeding chamber? Oh, um, yeah. Well, cool. basically, I built a frame. I built a frame to where my uh, grow bed sits on top of a, a little wooden frame that I'm pretty much able to seal off. And um, I have uh, a couple of little vent ports that are going to uh, allow for a passive ventilation system. I've got a few uh, fans on the uh, ceiling of it that are going to be moving that air. And then one of the things that I need to add is just a little oscillating fan to move the air around but um it's it's pretty much kind of styled after uh I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with his youtube channel uh vader vader og right. um he Absolutely. he um yeah he he made a breeding chamber and it, it's pretty badass he has, he has a few uh really good breeding videos up and that's kind of what i tried to model it after everything's within a uh let's see it's about two by three by four just a small little chamber you know can put about maybe three plants or so in there right perfect dude so it's it's just a little modest size that i'm able to uh keep it keep it sealed up i cocked up all the corners and stuff and i i uh, added some some little windows that i can open up and look inside as well so uh, nice. pretty much, I guess, after I seal it up, whenever the male starts throwing pollen, um, I'm going to uh, basically not be able to get in there for, you know, however long the pollen is flying around. So again, thank y'all for the breeding information. I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, following Vader's model, that's exactly right, man. That's who I'd be researching every step of the way when I did my stuff. And so, yeah. Super awesome. And the way that he got his mail set up on a pulley where he can lift his mail up without being in the room and then wait like three yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. I and love that. Is, that's super pimp. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much one of the last things that I need to put on my system is the little pulley system so I can pull that dude up and get him killed off. So that's, that's pretty much really like the main thing that I'm, that I'm, uh, that I'm waiting on. I'm pretty much babysitting a plant for a friend right now, and it's going to be done flowering sometime at the beginning of June. So he's kind of taking up my space, but he's going to hook me up with half of the harvest. So I'm not mad at it, you know. Right. But um, and as long as you ain't got no soon as, plants as, flowering too close, so you could go in there and probably just kill it real quick and pull it out or something. But yeah, well, I mean, this is Sorry, man, this is all there. within the same room. Um, if you if you go look at my channel, you can pretty much see I have a um, small indoor uh, aquaponics system set up, and the breeding chamber is in the same room. So I'm trying to take all the precautions I can to prevent pollen from escaping. So I see, absolutely, totally. I even uses a spray bottle and sprays the water in the rope while he's pulling the rope out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was thinking about doing that too. <laughs> But yeah, it's my first time, so I'm definitely uh, yeah, anxious right. to to learn the ins and outs of breeding. Super exciting, dude! Cool. Can yeah, hit me up anytime on DM if you want to chat about stuff. Or... Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's also something I was gonna mention. Is I need to I need to link up with you, uh, dude. Grows dude grows community and. Uh, seems like y'all definitely have a lot of knowledge to to give so absolutely that's yeah, always a good thing be patient and fish and everybody in dgc and right yeah so, yep. we try to be DGC's. supportive yeah oh, absolutely yeah. it's all about the growers love <laughs> um, but yeah i mean that's pretty much all that i've got going on right now nice Um, Michael, uh, are you still there? I saw you're, you muted your mic there. Oh, I'm sorry. Not, not you. Um, oh, Michael. Okay. Let's 
see if he'll uh he can unmute his mic all right well hopefully he'll get his mic unmuted um <laughs> i'll uh see if i can get a hold of him through other means um what do you have going on this week uh roger Mike is muted there. <laughs> He's trying to fix his mic. At any rate. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't. I didn't purposely mute my mic. Uh, oh, uh, unforgivable. I, you know. Well, you know, us blind mothers. You know. Uh, I was over here trying to. Uh, I've got an article on the uh, split. The stem splitting. And I was trying to, to give a look, put a post on. Suddenly, I couldn't post on the uh, the, the show page on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been messing with that for the last twenty minutes. But I've got a link for you. I posted in you in the in the uh, moderator chat, and that's a link to an article. To an actually, it's an article that includes uh, a, a an explanation on splitting the stem and why. Okay. You see, you see it up there? I'm looking. I can get it for you again. I would, um, let me see. Yeah, just, just well, yeah. Well, well, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what I've been doing the last 20, 20 minutes or so and listening uh, to some fine uh, information. I tell you what, that was breeding. I like the idea. I, I love the information I just heard about. Um, really good for people getting into aquaponics to know about the crawfish. You know, oh yeah, I'm, yeah. He's one of the few people I know that, that has done it and had a lot of Another great thing about crawfish is they will breed all on their own too, and uh, you won't even have to worry. It's like set them and forget them, and uh, harvest them every couple months, and have yourself a boil, and it's great. Well, don't you have to worry about your uh, nitrate levels going up at that point if they're breeding uh, without regulation. No, because they. They they put out such little nitrogen, like, like two or three hundred of them equals like one inch of fish. Right, oh. right. You can absolutely pack them into your system and not even worry. It's yeah, it's great. It yeah. really is. And they keep the water crystal clear because they're filter feeders. So that's another plus. Um, they tolerate a wide range. Like say, you know, say you do leach some some nutrients that you're feeding extra into your dual root zone say some of that does leach into your system it's not going to bother them uh, they they, they take a beating and keep on kicking they're great do you know what species they are that you're using um i use i use the uh rusty crawfish that are considered an invasive here and a lot of fishermen uh, have introduced them to our waterways in Colorado and in, in many other parts of the United States. They're uh, native to Louisiana, but uh, yeah, just the rusty crayfish. They're they're highly aggressive though, so like like I, was, I had mentioned earlier, you got to keep the water flow high and the turbidity up so that they're fighting the water current instead of each other. You know. Mm -hmm. That's a question a lot of people have too because. Uh, I was talking to uh, Aquaponic Dummy and I were talking about how a lot of people want to, they, they have a plan on going aquaponics and then they feel like they're going to sell the fish commercially as well as they turn around and sell their cannabis or their tomatoes uh, commercially also. So the problem is, is uh, you know, in, in some opinions that I've done with the research we've been looking at, because I do have, you know, as you know, Steve, I told you about the guy up in Michigan, actually, that uh, is uh, looking to have a major uh, commercial grill going up there pretty soon. Uh, but but we won't get off on that. Um, oh shoot. Um, the, they, yeah, all right, back to, so you're talking about, yeah, I have a crab boil every once in a while, or a boil every once in a while with a crawfish, but that's, a, address, can you guys address that, have been involved in it in that respect, because that's a question people have. In some places, it's, I'm pretty sure, in some places, you can't use the fish that you're using for your aquaponics system, and then sell them. 
So in one of you right because that, because of maybe like uh, and and I understand why they do that in those places because uh, your fish might be contaminated with this or that that's been added to the system pH buffers or you know any number of things that that we usually do end up having to use to keep our systems stable until they've matured to the point where you don't have to do any of that input anymore. Um, crawfish, all you have to do is uh, purge them and they're clean. So there, there shouldn't be, I don't see that there being a problem with uh, doing those commercially because once they've been purged, they're clean. So. You know, what do you say about the, in, all, in all in all, is it, is it across the board or can, or in some states or some counties or whatever, is there, are there areas where you can actually, you know, have quite, we're talking about commercial, uh, okay, I mean, these well, I, mean, I know a lot of little, you know, smaller farmers are trying to use aquaponics, and, well, like, like I told you, I wanted to have that, you know, like 16, you know, 16 foot, uh, four foot deep pool, Steve, and you guys said, man, you could build this gigantic thing, well, they're trying to do this, but, and they're also thinking they're going to be able to sell the fish, and I just wondered what your opinions were, and if, but, and, I, and I understand the crawfish is a different species, basically. So I can, all right, so that's a little not the same thing, like you said, it wants its purge. But what about the fish? Can, can people sell the fish in, all, in some states and not in other states? Um, as far as I know, right, there's all kinds of regulations you have to go through, rules and regulations and licensing <laughs> fees. And yeah, it's all course. about the money when it really comes down to it. They don't really care about the health of your fish or uh, the health of your system. They just care about the money, uh, the, bu the bureaucracies. Uh, and that just goes for, like, if you're trying to transport them out, out of state or even out of county, um, things like that, as far as I know. And with crawfish... Um, being that, uh, like the species I named, is a, considered an invasive uh, species. Um, like, th how are they going to tell? You know that. You know? <laughs> so you could probably skirt around. There's there's probably a lot of gray area when it comes to crawfish and other shellfish as well. Um, there's freshwater mussels that you can also use in aquaponics. Uh, I've used freshwater mussels before with uh, yeah. success. Um, there's prongs. There's uh, there's the red claw. I've I've wanted to try the red claw. The Australian red claw it grows up to a pound in weight. It's like basically a freshwater lobster, and I, I dream of trying that. But uh, yeah. Well, that's uh, interesting because I was thinking when you were talking about that about lobsters doing lobsters. So prongs are good too because if you could, if, and of course the reason is if if if. if so basically, you just have to check your own DHEC, your own state um, food guidelines as far as whether or not you can sell them before you planned on building this massive um, um, uh, system that, right. you, that you can't sell the fish. Well, you can't right. sell you know, the, well, the, the, and, the, and I can I can guarantee that any any uh, shellfish that you grow in an aquaponic system is going to be ten times at least cleaner than what you get out of the natural waterways because you don't have all the mud and gunk and pollution and all the shit that these shellfish are eating on a daily basis. And you know, like the the uh, the lobster that comes out of the the ocean has mercury content you're not going to get that in your right. crawfish or your lobsters in your aquaponic system because you're not putting mercury in it obviously so like you wouldn't have i don't think you would have any problem with passing any kind of health inspections or anything like that when it comes to your shellfish and uh it, i i think it is a viable commercial option that that more people should maybe look into exactly yeah, yeah but we have to make sure we have everybody check your local ordinances first you might spend a lot of money, you know, but it sounds to me like what you're saying is it comes down to my question was whether it was a, you could do it there. It sounds to me like you could probably do it most places where common sense rules, well, that limits it, but, um, but in other places, um, you, you, it's, out, it's outlawed. And I don't know about shellfish, but I know with, when it comes to like the fish. And tilapia, I mean, right. Tilapia, right. You can't, right. Because they're afraid, oh, a bird might pick up an egg from your tank and transport it to the lake and then this and that. It's like, 
it, it's insanity, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we can grow tilapia. I can put tilapia fingerlings right down the street. Believe it or not. Right. It's right. But, okay. but in some it's places, tilapia different. are illegal to to grow unless you go through all. It's like thousands of dollars worth of uh, licensing, and you have to show them that you're not connected in any ways and it goes on and on it's all sort of regulations right Sorry. hey guys i gotta cut out i gotta go start making dinner for the fam um it was good talking to everybody good seeing everybody uh if marty does make it on tonight uh somebody just let him know that i said congrats on the new kid and uh i will talk to everybody soon good see you, see you in the next week right or so. see you next week guys so. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually gonna uh, take this opportunity as well. I gotta go be domestic, so I appreciate the invite. I uh, will. Uh, yeah, I will definitely be viewing next week. Absolutely. So, thanks again, Steve. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Later, Malik. Guys. Bye, guys. Later, B. Do we get uh, Michael back? Yeah. Sorry. There you go. Hey, while you're there, uh, Mailer, uh, we can, I'm uh, going to be the coordinator next year for a project. Uh, we got a little spot to grow, and uh, I could really use some seeds. So uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd yeah. love to link up. Let me get you, get you my email, and I'll, I'll shoot you my number. And yeah, absolutely. I'm right over here and by the Flint area, and um, yeah, I quit my regular job, and I've been focusing on this, and been doing. Just having a blast, man. Everything's going really great. Um, I've been growing for about three years now, and I just love it. So it's a passion, and I'm not even worried about money. I just want to make, you know, grow a bunch of weed and smoke it all. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I didn't spend any time. I keep mine to myself, too. <laughs> I don't sell it. I keep mine to myself. <laughs> yeah, I didn't... Uh, didn't spend enough time talking about the plant, but uh, I got four little ones uh, outdoor uh, in a soil. But next year, nice. I'm run a little program. Yeah, yeah, that's all I could do. Uh, hey, I, take I, care I, of this one. Guys, let me ask could they freeze? Because uh, I had some really great, all, you know, all from uh, Europe, you know, from uh, Amsterdam, and uh, they'd always been really good to me. And then a couple of years, but they, uh, later, they froze on the way to California. A hard freeze in a truck could kill them off because I only got, uh, believe it or not, I think five or six to pop out of thirty-two that I tried. I would try. Yeah. I would free try freezing off. does cause cell cellular damage. Freezing will do that, right? Okay, because I never had such worse luck, and uh, you know we we're going to do a much bigger run, and uh, but I ended up with. Uh, Three um, uh, DJ Shorts version of the Blue Dream, the Azure Haze, and um, I got what's called an F10, which is a 90% um, sativa, and it looks like it's going to be a purple one. Oh, wow. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's yeah, really so nice. That's, I would try a, a seed sprout tea. Um, you know, you can take corn, corn seeds work really good. Um, soybeans, uh, other beans uh, work really well. Sprout them in water, and then take that water and pour it into another cup, and then put your cannabis seeds in that, and that yeah. will help. Well, at least it'll help increase your chances. Well, I've done it for you know uh, five a long time now, five years, and I just uh, and those those kind of seeds always uh, you know in four days. Uh, would be popped and uh, strong working, and uh, I just uh, I thought that the, that being uh, on the truck line four or five days across the country uh, a couple of years ago, um, I know they 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 that my only conclusion is they froze. You know, you know sometimes they'll get that they'll get older to where they won't be as vigorous. Uh, definitely, the new seeds are going to be vigorous and just pop and have that crazy vigor and. Yeah, um, sometimes if it's an older seed, it will kind of give you a problem. And if maybe if you know, I would think if it went through some temperature fluctuations, it's definitely not going to be good for it. So yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, not good. 
the longer the seed is dormant, the longer the seed, the seed is dormant, the longer it can take to propagate. And that's why a lot of people like to use the soaking method too. When you soak them for 24 hours or so, you know, prior to trying to propagate them. So. Right. Just to add to Malik, what Malik was saying. So go on, sorry, go on, Mike. Go on. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. I got this, like I say, we're uh, Thank you. in a, um, the 707, or I believe it was. We got a, you know, a, okay. a hot shotted soil um, that we're amending every couple of weeks with a. Uh, Okay. Uh, you know, it's a bunch of ground up goodies. Uh, like yeah. super soil with amendments and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah mostly organic. <laughs> and um, I'm just stepping them out right now into different size pots. And my, uh, my point, man, is new, new to it. So, I mean, even the watering, you know, uh, you know every, every bit of it, you know, he's tracking the sun with the plant. I, I finally uh, was over there yesterday and, uh, and I said, no, 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 don't track the sun, turn them a quarter every day. You know, I, he's an architect and I told him how important it was to build a little character in these little babies. And so anyway, uh, everybody's learning and I'm teaching and, um, you know, it's all going to be good in the fall. I got, like I say, a little spot and it's a hippie commune that uh, <laughs> I've been taken into as, uh, you know, uh, their leader on that. And, um, a very good group of people and uh, spiritual and uh, very well grounded and uh, you know the opposite of really what I normally deal with with the uh, 420 group but uh, anyway uh, they are uh, anxious to get a little thing going on and uh, you know with the uh, this thing coming apart uh, with the seeds was a big uh, disappointment and then uh, I had uh, some kind of medical crisis which is yet to be explained but um i think again it was spiritual in nature but i started doing that therapy and i'd uh it hit me so hard i it knocked me out and i was laying on my floor in my in my apartment for three oh, days Jesus. and i didn't uh when i when i got up i mean i didn't even know i didn't even know i got knocked down but when i got up uh it was three days later and i, I didn't even know that i, I found myself uh, out in the, the parking lot the fourth day and I couldn't operate my cell phone and, uh, which was obviously well you guys could see that I can't do that <laughs> uh, for real I couldn't turn it on and um, I couldn't even I didn't I couldn't spell my name and, and I was out of it I don't know what happened but uh, they're still yet to uh, tell me anything medical but uh, I think it was this spiritual polarity of the cancer and this this treatment I'm doing is working because it's uh, it's lymphocytes, you know, and it's um, going after this cancer like I've never seen it ever. And the, the, I mean, the oil's good. I mean, this shit's got a hemi in it, baby. I mean, wow, I, I just can't believe what it's doing. And uh, with me, it was such a deficit, you know. Again, I'm, I'm blessed. But anyway, um, these plants should be good. And, uh you know, the Blue Dream is really my favorite. You know, that Azure Haze I ran in the basement down in Detroit, actually in Ferndale. And um, long story short, I got run out of the city of Ferndale, Michigan by gunpoint. And um, wow. was, um, yeah, and uh, <laughs> they really came for, um, they really came for guns because uh, it was going to be an easy gun charge and uh, run me out of town um, on that, but, you know, run me to prison on that, but um, I can't, they came up empty handed when they came to the house and I had no guns and uh, my exact words for those pricks were, uh, I knew you were coming, I just didn't know when. And I, I think I might have been thrown down to the floor at that point, but uh, <laughs> I had a big a vault, a 900-pound safe upstairs that they were anxious to get into, and I waited till the last minute to finally, you know, open it because I thought they'd burn down the house um, the way they were acting, and um, <coughs> they um, finally got access to the safe and uh, it was empty and. Uh, I had sold off these. This I had a nice little collection of military uh, weapons I don't don't need at this point in my life, and uh, had uh, sold and um, 
they were uh, disappointed in that. And uh, the cops that came over, this, you guys are going to like this. Um, they were indicted by the FBI uh, after this. And what, what really the long story short there was that there was a, uh, an entire group of rogue Detroit police officers uh, that this was the group. And they came to my house and a lot of other people's homes, uh, le legit places. I mean, I had cancer and AIDS and making this oil and growing in my basement. And because I was out on Fox 2 News talking about it, and uh, some of the newspapers and being out there and really making an enemy amongst my friends in the marijuana community who, you know, had other ideas and wanted me to tone things down and not be so, uh, you know, out there with the message of, you know, cancer and whatever. And so uh, the cops came and uh, ended up and uh, being indicted for all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, privateer uh, crimes, uh, you know, private uh, things that they were doing against the citizens and uh, including running their own drug house and stealing cocaine from one place and taking it some, somewhere else. The, the lead cop uh, shot and killed himself um, a couple, three, four years ago. And um, then the two of the other five, uh, one got nine years and the other one got 13 years in federal prison. And um, this is still ongoing. Uh, the DPD, Detroit Police Department, Rogue Force, if you look it up, Narcotics Unit. Um, they, um, they're really the feds are still after the other three and uh, in the big picture. And uh, we got a, a class action lawsuit against them. And uh, hopefully we get a piece of Detroit's ass. And uh, I, I moved out to... Uh, San Diego as a result is a, a refugee of the drug war and um, out here with limited uh, limited means but I'm, you know, I mean, I'm good you know what I'm saying but uh, quite a trip <clears throat> nice do you want to um, talk a little bit about how, uh, how people at home might be able to try and make some oil uh, for themselves or how they might go about it Oh, you know, the oil thing is uh, pretty simple. Uh, the main thing is to, you know, uh, make, uh, make a clean end product. And to get that done, you need to do the, uh, uh, the work ahead of time, which is the, uh, um, the separation of the resin from the plant. And, um, you know, if you're using uh, an alcohol, which is going to normally pick up a lot of chlorophyll, um, You'll want to do this, and ideally in a uh, uh, a walk-in freezer, if you could get the uh, flour and the um, alcohol both at a uh, at, you know as cold as you can get it in a walk-in. You know, if it's uh, zero or you know ten, whatever you can do, that would be fine. And uh, what have I ever, would do is have. Have you ever you tried have, doing it in a bowl? like a salad bowl and putting your implant material in that and then putting the alcohol in that and then putting dry ice on it and, and like almost cold boiling it? Well, that's a good idea. But um, the, my, my real trick is to do a really a fast wash um, and to not exceed three minutes um, in any, in any, you know, when the timer starts is when it gets wet and it, and it doesn't matter what else. <laughs> three minutes is three minutes. So, um, that's my thing. And, um, so what I'll normally do is, uh, I'll use a five gallon, uh, paint stream, uh, of, uh, like a nylon, uh, mesh monofilament, uh, bag filter, uh, with an elastic, uh, garter type top and, uh, put, put that in a five gallon bucket and crunch up all my bud, you know, by hand or whatever, um, and uh, have a, almost a rollable consistency and ideally not powdered um, and have a nice little chop to it and uh, then go ahead and uh, freeze them, you know, if you're using the 190, uh, which is really the trend, you know, it's where everybody's at with it. And uh, I'm, the, I'm the medical now. This is uh, strictly on medical marijuana oil, uh, FICO. Um, <clears throat> Then I would uh, drop the uh, solvent in as fast as I could pour it. 
um, three minutes, and then I pull that that filter right out and and and, draw, and hang it over the uh, you know the bucket to uh, collect it all, and um, then uh, let that uh, do that twice uh, probably. Uh, you know, generally, and um, then uh, that material needs to be filtered again uh, with a, um, I, I've got this uh, on my Facebook, um, all the pictures of uh, the mesh sizes and all that. And uh, what I would do is box uh, from one five gallon bucket to another um, three times, a total of six um, exchanges and through a filter, uh, a bag filter, and then a, a finer uh, mash, and I'd have to check, but I think it was 150. Would take all the uh, the plant material out and just leave that uh, empty uh, shell casing uh, from the trichomes. You know, you get that sand at the bottom of the um, of the wash, and then um, I would um, then use that old technique from like uh, pharmaceutical companies and use a graduate at the end to separate the trichomes from the uh, clear wash and then uh, boil it down. And, uh, you know, I always used a rice cooker, but, you know, using better equipment is always cool. You know, out here I've seen and been around a little bit of uh, rotavap technologies and uh, 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 short path uh, extractions and things like that. But um, the, by and large, it was all a rice cooker. And uh, so uh, go ahead and run it down uh, as close as you could can to the end. And I always finished it with a air gun with heat on it with, uh, you know, an industrial like a Milwaukee style um, heat gun that would actually produce air changes and heat. And that's really how resin you know, cures, and that's how you drive solvent out of a resin with air changes and heat. Um, and and uh, that's how I would finish the oil and uh, let it sit overnight and uh, come back and uh, heat it back up with the heat gun and uh, just as, uh, you know, just kind of break that, uh, that viscosity real easy with a, just a little bit of heat. It would, the viscosity would drop right out and uh, you could package it right up into the you know, I always put it in tens because it was going, uh, you know, as a full full package to, uh, you know, a, a patient that was, uh, you know, requested a full, you know, a full course, you know. So it would vary whatever, or, you know, they'd get, you know, whatever I could get, basically 80, 90, 110, uh, somewhere in that range. But uh, some really good clean oil and... Um, you know, uh, I made it for uh, several years, and uh, it was really a, a, my passion, and I was doing it myself. You know, and I, you know, I, I should, I, I was listening to this video that I did with or something online with uh, my, with me on it a few years ago, and I was talking about eating six pounds of uh, marijuana uh, that I grew. So I did, I did do a lot of the. Uh, the oil that I did was mine. I was I grew it myself. I couldn't float the whole thing. I couldn't make oil for me and them and you know my patients and all that stuff. But I actually did a six pound run and ate it, and it was two hundred and eighty grams of oil, you know, and uh, as fast as I could. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty good story. Damn, that's a lot of oil to uh, ingest in one time, but <laughs> I'm sure it's beneficial to your system. But yeah, it's it took really interesting to me. It, it took a few months. Um, like I say, I was almost hand to mouth, and that uh, I could get a pound every uh, three to four weeks in a nine station perpetual. <laughs> this was all under a five foot window in a basement, running uh, up to six hundreds, fours and sixes, and uh, T fives, uh, nine stations, and uh, I get three at a time in an earth garden. Um, every three to four weeks, uh, which was a pretty cool thing. And uh, so again, this oil was almost hand to mouth. The three were getting done and, and cured enough to, uh, you know, I always call it ballast weed, but it wasn't that, you know, that beautiful 90 day cure that we all like. It was, uh, you know, more of a, 
<laughs> ten day, <laughs> ten day. Is this ready to go, deal? It was dry. And, <laughs> yeah, is it, if it was cold enough, it was to my benefit. You know, I go out in the garage. It was twenty five below back there, yeah. and uh, so we made some badass oil and some just god awful conditions in the this old garage. And it was uh, really quite quite cool. And um, you know, I just talked to this guy that I had a homeless guy living with me actually, uh, and. Um, he ended up being a really cool uh, dude, and uh, he got caught up in the fray here with this uh, lawsuit and all that. And he, he's actually going to be a beneficiary, and you know, I mean, he's actually picked up the whole, you know, all the benefits. He was there, and uh, you know, I just talked to him on the phone. I got a check from the uh, forfeiture department from the fucking pigs, the police that. Um, what pays me back the money they took out of my pocket in my front room. And uh, he had 150 bucks on the line. And that was the, the conversation. The guy's actually getting his money back. And, uh, and he's on the lawsuit to, to win, you know, whatever we can get out of him. So it's, it's just a beautiful, uh, uh, that's a good thing. I mean, that's, I, I really kind of think that's pretty hip. Did you guys see, um, this is uh, relevant to a couple of people in the room. Did you guys see that... Um, the American Legion officially asked the government to deschedule cannabis in order to help veterans. Wow. Good to see us. Good news. Well, well good time for a new segment. Yep, yeah, that was uh, good earlier. Um, let's see what day of the week was that? Two or three days ago? On the 22nd. So that was on Monday. Um, the American Legion formally asked uh, the government to deschedule it. They said it helps with PTSD and a bunch of other, uh, uh, helps reduce uh, opioid use and a bunch of other things um, for veterans. So, yep, so that was really good uh, to, to wow. see you know, a group like them to, uh, to stand up and ask for cannabis legalization. So. You know, we've got, like, you know, we've got a whole bunch of veterans on our forum, and yeah. that's, that's I, that, I really love it, and uh, and you're right. That there are stories when we talk, because a lot of them, you know, I've talked with uh, on Skype and such, and uh, they survived basically just like uh, a couple of the a couple of your guests you've had that are veterans and all. Same thing, same story. They got off the opioids and you know and all, and they got through it, you know, and and survived. Because they were able to use cannabis to get you know to relax and you know, just fantastic and and I'm glad to see that. There's been a few stories creeping around about that. Before. Yeah, I've seen nice most of they, us. Yeah, thank God. It's nice to see they made it official. official. Yeah, it's always good to see them uh, groups yeah. like that come out and help. That's cool. Well, we'll all advocate for that, huh? Yep. I know Mammoth P hasn't been able to come on the show the last couple of weeks because they've been off in Washington, D.C. lobbying um, for uh, cannabis and a couple of uh, and uh, more eco-minded uh, production of stuff. And, you know, uh, yeah, they, they had a whole bunch of stuff they were telling me about. I'm sure they'll tell us all about it when we get them on the show here in the next few weeks. So that'll be cool. <laughs> I've been in talks with them, and that's been a little bit... Uh, uh, it's been going great. We just have to wait until they're they're free. So, what uh, what other uh, things did you guys want to talk about this week? We have a couple of news stories and stuff like that. Um, there was recently a study that came out uh, about leukemia, um, where they used high high doses of um, cannabis oil, uh, a CBD, CBG, and CBGV. Um, yeah, specifically uh, to treat leukemia, yeah. uh, and, and uh, this is in, in London, and they had a really, really, really good results. Um, wow! So I know what kind of seeds we have had. Great. We have had good results with leukemia. It's been one almost a dead ringer from the get go. It's amazing, David. You know, there's been the, all this. You know, you don't ever want to really jump on it, but you want it to be true. But you see all the claims people make about, you know, cannabis helps uh, cure cancer, 
And if they're actually now having studies where cannabis is actually helping to cure cancer, well, wow, I'm on board. Michael, do you want to yeah. right. tell them? Sure, Michael, yeah. do you want to tell them, like, or I don't know if you mind talking about it, but a little bit about, like, how much that's helped you. Uh, I know that hasn't totally helped all the way well, out. Well, it can't be on uh, oil. Um, are you there? Yes, yeah, we absolutely. hear you. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Um, the oil thing uh, bought me a lot of time, you know, it got me to that next level and uh, it ended up, uh, you know, it's still all natural. I just had to pay a thousand dollars a day for these extra lymphocytes to uh, go after this cancer. And it was, you know, really, it looks like a game ender for the cancer. I mean, it's really over. I mean, it, it's, it's, cur it's curing it. And, um, but you know, I mean, based on a double a double tap, you know, I mean, I don't know, uh, you know, as far as um, you know, liability to add, uh, you know, AIDS and cancer is uh, a lot of, um, you know, quite a burden. And um, I just think that uh, it was I just stretched nothing for a long time, and uh, you know, needed uh, something. But it was the oil, you know, that got me. Uh, to that point, and this is only three or four months ago, um, and I had guys up in the uh, UP that were sending me the oil uh, to, uh, you know, carry me on, and uh, but, you know, really not enough. I wasn't doing a, a gram a day, you know, like I should, or even more, uh, you know, I was doing what I could, and uh, so, you know, over the course of uh, the two and a half years out here, um, I haven't had enough oil, and um, so that and the fact that I'm, I don't take any of the pills for the uh, HIV because I, I just know that's a dead end, um, you know, it, it just became uh, just too much, and uh, so I needed that um, that assist, and it turned out to be this, um, this immunotherapy, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's farmed unnaturally, but it's the it's the original deal. It's the, using your original system to do it, and um, so what I'm seeing is a reversal of what was. Uh, I mean, it was really I had cancer so bad that I had it in both ears, my nose, um, under my hair, and uh, my uh, my nose. Actually, I lost a good part of it, and. Um, I mean, I was going down in, in flames, and uh, what I really saw at the end was uh, the cancer was a lot bigger than uh, than I even thought of. Uh, that it was all connected. It was all one one cancer. It was a giant cancer. My my whole head was cancer, and all around my mouth, my cheeks, my forehead, my head, scalp, uh, ear ears I mean come on and uh, so um, you know but the fact of the matter is uh, you know the oil got me to the point where uh, you know I, I was doing a save it, saving private Ryan Ryan type you know scenario but honestly it was a war the whole the whole time and uh, I, I finally at the end uh, got through and really uh, unbelievable with these doctors and uh you know, having to pitch it, you know, the fact that, you know, I have no money at all. Um, and to get this, this, uh, this opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, get to you guys and, and continue my, uh, you know, this path, which is, uh, you know, uh, to educate and provide, um, you know, to the sick and uh, people that are in need. And, uh, you know, once we get through these laws and, uh, you know, stay out of prison doing it, um, uh, I'm, I'm really going to be happy. I'm going to be a super happy guy. And that's really, really what I'm all about. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the oil production you did? Um, for I know you helped a bunch of people um, in a different place than you live now. Uh, you know, out here, uh, I haven't uh, been able to... Uh, you know, really get any traction. The uh, the the market is um, is so warped, and uh, um, you know, it's just it's just it's just a whole nother uh, world out here on um, 
uh, you know, the, the people and uh, the, just, just the whole thing. I mean, I, I've, it, I've gotten no, uh, you know, I, I don't feel like, uh, you know, uh, I'm very <laughs> welcome at all. And uh, of course, you know, I've called a lot of them out directly and that, that doesn't get me any brownie points either. But uh, the fact of the matter is, um, I mean, I've got no time for, uh, you know, sellouts and turncoats and, and, and people that are undermining, uh, you know, our effort to do some, something good. Um, and, um, you know, a, a lot of these folks don't have that same criteria. Um, so, again, uh, uh, I, I've made the THCA oil out here. I've, I've made uh, for a guy with Parkinson's. Um, I've... Uh, Helped out a guy from uh, uh, actually through a, another Michigan connection. Uh, went and spent the weekend at his house and showed him how to make oil and uh, treat his cancer. And uh, uh, a little bit, you know. Uh, again, I'd been exposed to some uh, better technologies out here um, in the uh, actual uh, process of the. Um, you know, the oil and, you know, recovering the solvent, which is always the big bonus and the uh, safety factor, uh, which is paramount. But uh, um, you know what, it's been a big disappointment for me to come out here and not be uh, well received as somebody that could uh, help people. Uh, this, is a, this is an area that's gonna be uh, really uh, commercialized and, uh, uh, it's really hard to find good people. It, it, it's sad to say, in Southern California, it's a uh, it's a different animal. Do you want to uh, talk about um, some of the work you did in um, other places to make oil for other people? I know you helped out quite a few people. Well, again, you know, Michigan. Um, yeah. I, uh, I I uh, had a. a, a a, com a complete setup to uh, be able to process and, uh, you know, uh, run my own, uh, <coughs> my own, my own thing. You know, it was a, a ideal setup. Uh, I spent um, a lot of money on my uh, basement uh, with air handling and, uh, you know, everything that it had and uh, um, climate control and, uh, um, you know, everything. It was beautiful. You guys would have loved it. Uh, we had some local magazines that was in a few times as uh, being up out there, you know, in a, kind of a progressive idea, uh, you know, with the, um, the the way I was doing it with, you know, three in a row and, uh, uh, you know, perpetual and, and all that. And uh, uh, it was it was pretty cool. But on the other side of that, uh, basement I had a uh, setup that was originally uh, for building model airplanes that I uh, converted into a, an oil area and um, uh, an area that I could do a lot of the uh, pre pre work you know in regards to uh, processing the bud and then uh, I had a garage outside which was a standalone uh, 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 um, building that uh, had power and everything and uh, it was in a, a good location that wasn't uh, you know a, very visible and uh, so I was able to blow and go right there in the garage uh, a, a lot and uh, I was running oil uh, you know um, it, pretty constantly and uh, I had um, uh, people that uh, you know actually uh, uh, contacted me and um, sent the oil all over the world, really, and uh, shipped it in uh, UPS and FedEx. And uh, the, uh, people uh, were so desperate, you know, for the well-being of their uh, uh, loved ones or whomever they were uh, taking care of. That I, I was actually getting uh, money, just straight money, right, uh, you know, in the mail to uh, cover the cost of the. Uh, the uh, bud and all the, uh, you know, the material that might be associated with that, whatever. But, you know, you just don't hear people sending money in a bag, you know, um, to somebody they'd never met. And uh, <coughs> it was routine. It was, uh, it was really pretty cool. And uh, the, the, the beauty of it is they got their stuff. And, uh, 
they, you know, they, they got as much as I could get out of it, which was, uh, you know, uh, you know, again, as, as much as I could, but that uh, was clean. And, uh, you know, it was just, it worked out and there was never any trouble with, um, you know, sending it anywhere, uh, you know, with regards to shipping or, or getting caught up in that, but, um, uh, lucky, you know, but, uh, doing the right thing, you know, you get good luck. And, uh, so I was fortunate on that. And, um, again, uh, you know, uh, taking it to the level that I did, uh, you know, in regards to putting it, uh, putting that out on the local media in the, in the, uh, several newspapers and literally on Fox two news, um, I think it became overwhelming for some of these uh, privateer type individuals that, you know, somehow think that they're going to take over, you know, the marijuana business and own it for themselves. And um, uh, they could have had a hand in <laughs> sending these rogue force cops into my house because really, uh, you know, uh, it seemed to be pretty vindictive and, uh, uh you know, when the, when the cops, uh, you know, were, were hammering on me, um, they, they really were focusing on this gun. And uh, I should have said that, you know, a gun charge is an automatic two years uh, in the state of Michigan. There's no debating that. If uh, you go up in front of a judge with that, you're out of here for two years. So, you know, gone's gone. And uh, uh, I think I was really in a lot of people's way and just was not – was not going along with the flow of things, uh, whether I was making oil or not, um, threatening that some of these people's business uh, is just, uh, you know, not not a good thing. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I made oil for a lot of people, and I, you know, I actually got somebody out here now with leukemia that um, I just shared that same bit with. And uh, I'm going to see what the response is here at the local coffee house tomorrow and, uh, and talk more about the oil. Um, you know, some people with their illness, they tend to own it. And uh, when they own it so long, they start to have a romance when they start loving on it. And uh, and this romance, uh, you know, becomes a situation that's really unhealthy. And, uh, you know, this this individual seems to be almost at that stage in the game that uh, she's going to some conference because she's one of six people in the world with this type of leukemia. And it's like, hey, lady, you didn't win the freaking lottery. You got leukemia. You better get your boots on the ground and you better win this because it's going to win you. And uh, so we're going to have that talk. But, um, the, you know, that's where I'm at with... Um, with this individual and uh you know it's it's ironic that you mentioned that but um so i'm trying to help out whomever i can and uh you know sitting at a starbucks uh restaurant with uh i got no car no way around uh you know i'm pretty limited but uh i'm constantly uh you know putting it out there that uh you know this this uh, oil and the, and the, and the marijuana based medicines are uh, you know really our future and to, to look look forward to that you know and uh, and protect it um, because uh, we we're, we're being sold out by our own and uh, and then the obvious uh, crew the lawyers um, and that whole group so. Corporate money, corporate money. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I saw them all back east. They all, all these, uh, you know, these pro guys that, you know, originally in 2010, they were all, uh, you know, supporting and they're, you know, seemed to be part of the group, you know, and uh, uh, then they, they'd all sold out, you know, uh, within a few years. And uh, uh, even uh, the lawmakers that were, uh, um, you know, fighting against us uh, in the Michigan uh, Lansing area uh, <laughs> have gone to the point where they not only quit their jobs, they open a freaking dispensary, you know. So, yeah. um, I mean, that's really uh, the gist of it. And that's how crooked it is. And <coughs> I, got, um, I got a lady uh, in England, she wants to do a story with me, and I'm going to do it on the crooked world of legal weed. 
and uh, because it's so pathetic, what you know, we yeah, yeah. Do, yeah, to ourselves on this, and we all lose, and there's not one person or one group that's going to own this thing. And uh, of course, what's really fueling it is uh, the pharmaceutical dollar. That's where this is. Uh, you know, coming from, and uh, everything else is just chafing and, and just a distraction for you to uh, look at some other target, and it couldn't be that, and maybe the next guy is going to be the, the better guy. Well, look what happened this last turnaround. The, the, the next guy was worse, and, uh, and this, this assumption that, you know, when a law passes, you know, good people are going to assume that, you know, it's going to get better for them. Well, guess what? The people that are passing it aren't good people. And when you get bad people passing bad laws, you get fucked. That's what happens. And you end up in prison. And you end up with, like, John Roberts up uh, in Escanaba, Michigan on, on the 14th of June. It, it, you know, is facing a judge, uh, you know, because of a traffic violation and, uh, you know, in possession of his oil. So, it's, you know... Uh, the guy ought to be really, they ought to made him mayor of Escanaba or wherever the hell he is up there in the UP, somewhere in uh, Grant's Crossing or Bruce Crossing, Michigan. Look that one up. Um, so anyway, um, that's my thought. Awesome. How did you, uh, what was the first time that you made um, uh, oil? Well, um, the first time I made it, I was helping us other, the other guys make it, who is uh, John Roberts and uh, a, a, another guy by the name of Monkey Paw. Um, and then uh, a, real, a real cool dude. I ended up living with him after the cops ran me out of town. It was my, my staging ground for San Diego was uh, up in K-Pack with, uh, with Monkey Paw. We had a good time over the winter, long, cold winter. Uh, but um, and then there was Gersh Avery, and uh, who's uh, really a, a, a key player in the oil. Uh, and the three of uh, them uh, had a, more of a consortium, if you will, of uh, the oil maker clan, uh, this Michigan uh, uh, oil makers group, and uh, they um, they were doing their thing. And you know, I got the card, you know, to. Uh, uh, participate in this medical marijuana, which I just thought was, uh, you know, a get out of jail free thing where I could have weed and not get busted, which, and then on top of that, grow it, which is, you know, an unbelievable dream come true. And uh, uh, so uh, that was really where the mindset was at the time. But, um, you know, this cancer that I speak of, uh, this is, I actually posted this on Facebook that, you know, I'm coming towards, I'm actually seeing the end of this cancer but it, it was, it's been an 11,000 day battle to, you know, get to this, you know, point. And so, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a really long time and the cancer came back uh, somewhere along the line in uh, 2010, I suppose. And um, I'm going to these group meetings and meeting all these people in Michigan that, you know, are, have big bags of really good weed and, you know, we started having some really good times and uh, having uh, fun. And uh, my cancer came back and uh, I came to this group of Gersh and his buddies. Uh, and so less than that, uh, Gersh, is, he's, a little, he's a little flaky. So uh, I didn't really know how to take him at first. And um, I listened to him and I, you know, I, I just didn't know what he was talking about. And uh, after a while, I finally uh, realized I had cancer, and I asked him, um, this, this oil you speak of, when you say it works on everything, I want to nail it down to one thing. I want to know if it works on cancer. And he said, yeah, that's what I've been talking about. And I said, holy Christ, man, I've got cancer, and I want to try it. Would you, would you show me how to do it? And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, we will. And I uh, said, so game on. And so I was, uh, you know, an engineer at the time and doing the robots and the paint and all this sort of thing and uh, a real cheerleader for that and good at it and uh, making good money. And uh, so, I, you know, I had, I had some loot. And we, I put it all into the, the, the grow room and all that. And uh, 
the whole effort for that and uh, you know, lost interest in the business, but uh, went on to, uh, you know, listen to these guys and, and we made oil uh, at a couple of different <coughs> places. I remember uh, at one point, we're up in, I think, Claire, Michigan, we were doing some kind of a, a local thing. We made oil at a state park. It was crazy. It was one of those, uh, you know, those, those state like enclosures or you jump under when it's raining, whatever. And we're out there doing that, uh, you know, making oil and showing people. And um, I remember uh, a few times out at uh, Monkey Paws Place in Mount Clemens, Michigan, um, off of Gratiot Road, he had a place and uh, we'd made oil there. Uh, more, that's where it was really starting to step up and it, it started to work for me. I made the oil with them and they gave it to me and I started doing a topical and you know, I started, started to see the cancer breaking down and backing off and uh, you know, the, my bottom line was that it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't realize how big this thing was and uh, I was just tickling its ass and uh, these spots I was working <laughs> on, you know, it was just getting madder and madder and you know what? It's the shark of, of medical diseases and when that son of a bitch turns and when it finally turns to bite you, you're done. And, uh, you know, thank God I had, you know, some kind of backup and I uh, pulled the pin on it and it worked. And it was right there at the last second. But the bottom line was, um, you know, that's, uh, that, that's really what I was up against and I didn't know it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working these little regional spots and the, the whole area was just hotter than hell. And uh, none of these doctors would go there. And even here, I, you know, you wouldn't believe how hard they worked towards getting me towards surgery. And I, you know, I said, no, God, no, I, I've heard of this other stuff that, you know, that, you know, it's, it works from the inside out. And don't you think that would work? And well, no, we don't. We, we want to cut your nose off. And I thought, Good God almighty. And so I, like I say, I worked it out, but uh, this was huge. And um, so it finally let go and it was coming for me. I mean, this was, this was it, you know, and, uh, Right at the end of the year there, uh, uh, you know, it was really uh, bad. And um, I put on Facebook, I couldn't wear my Ray-Bans anymore. I didn't, I didn't have enough nose left, you know, to put my glasses on, which is pretty fucked up. And uh, so that, that it's actually coming back and, uh, you know, regrowing, which is, uh, you know, just really off, beyond belief. I got a buddy of mine I sit and have coffees with, and he's a he's a doctor, and he's a, he works at Scripps Hospital. It's where they ended up taking me when I was found in my parking lot, not knowing who the hell I was, and couldn't op couldn't operate a, a cell phone or believe it or not, they, uh, this this guy took me to Starbucks, and uh, I said I said it was somebody else's phone. This is how delirious I was. It was somebody else's phone, and my phone must be at the Starbucks. Would you? take me there and I'll get my phone back because I, I don't know what time it is. And the guy said, yeah, I mean, I'll take you up there. And so he takes me up there and he says, what's wrong? And I said, well, this is the wrong place. And he <laughs> said, what do, you, what do you mean it's the wrong place? And uh, I said, it's not, it's not the right area. This, is, this isn't the Starbucks I go to. And he's looking at me and said, but this is the one you go to every day. And I, I said, no, it, it isn't. It's, it's, it's not even in the right area. And, and look, look out the window. Look. And, and he, he's like, I'm, I don't know what's going on, man, but this is it, you know? And uh, so, um, again, he takes me back. This is Saturday, Saturday night. And, you know, the rescue didn't come in really until Sunday. And uh, I fell down Wednesday. And uh, so I'm just bouncing around. And, um, you know, I couldn't spell my name at the, at the hospital. And, uh, so what happened? I said, I don't know where I've been for three days. There was blood all over the floor and it came out of my ear. And um, I just I just went to a specialist here in UCSD and uh, he said, your story doesn't match anything. And I said, well, I, <laughs> I'm telling you that that's what happened. And uh, so they, I, you know, when they took me to the hospital, it was definitely... Uh, uh, dehydrated and lay, looked like I'd been laying on the floor for three days, and they checked me out and said, "You, yeah, you have been." And uh, that's we are really that's really rare. And I said, "Well, 
I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know what happened. And uh, so, you know, that's what that was. But, uh, you know, again, I, th- I think that was that, 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 that cancer was in me so deep that when that, that, when that bastard, you know, saw that, you know, somehow that sense that there was, there was something in the water that wasn't, didn't taste good. And bam, I turned it right, right in his face and uh, won, you know, which is crazy. And, uh, you know, going against the universe at that level and, you know, when, when that animal wants to, it thinks it's going to win, it always does. And, you know, this time it didn't win. And uh, I, I would just thank God I, I was, you know, I, I was had the resources to, you know, even give you that bit, you know, that story. Yeah, that's awesome. It's crazy. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm I'm still battling uh, for Social Security, believe it or not. And um, I got I got um, got out of the hospital, and uh, sure as shit, if there wasn't a letter from them and saying I wasn't sick enough, and I thought, you know, motherfucker, um, (laughs) what do I got to do for you guys? Seriously, that's insane. I mean, uh, are you serious? And uh, they so, wanted to cut your nose off, but you're not eligible for Social Security. Correct. And uh, you know, I I was really I was just shocked. And I again, it took me about uh, six or eight weeks to really recover from that. I was just I, I was talking really slow and quiet, and I and I, I was hit hard. And I don't know what hit me, but. You know, I, I'd never been in a in a situation like that, and I mean, hit really hard. Like, you know, I I can't even describe how big it was. It was was really really big, and uh, so um, you know, to get up from that, uh, it literally took weeks. And uh, you know, I, I'm I was always the next day guy. I mean, I, I I joked about it on Facebook that you know what, out of all the surgeries that I had done over the years, I mean. On a few of them, I think I beat the doctor out of surgery. You know, I mean, I'm out there, freaking waiting room, fully recovered, ready to go. You know, and uh, you know, really a, a comeback hit. And uh, this was not at all, you know, easy or quick. And um, so again, I think it uh, had a lot, a lot to do with uh, the winning and losing part of, you know, the universe and to turn it around at the end. Uh, you know, in my favor. Uh, you know, it didn't go well, and um, I ended up, I ended up getting, uh, you know, some kind of, all I, all I can say is it was some kind of fight or whatever, there was blood, I mean, a big puddle of blood on the floor and all over the couch, and I'm thinking, well, <clears throat> I don't even, I was so out of it, I, I, I get to the blood thing, and uh, this was, uh, I think, you know, along the four-day line, um, I'm going, well, wow, there's blood all over the floor. I, you know, instead of thinking, well, wow, I'm the only one here, duh, it's fucking me. And I call 911, I decide I clean it up and then not do anything. And, you know, I was that far checked out. And uh, so I did, I cleaned up the blood on the floor and I'm thinking, oh, that's odd. And, uh, oh, well, and, you know, we'll move on. And I uh, just had no idea what was going on. Oh, sorry to hear that. Crazy. Already. Um, let's see here. Uh, South Carolina legalized uh, hemp finally this week. Yay. So that's good. That is good. You know that guy? Yeah, uh, but but with that, how ma- the question is is how many of the uh, you know the big farmers out there are going to do it because there's there's no way the USDA is going to approve them for uh, loans to do it, and there's not going to be any insurance for their crops, and uh, that's that's really what a lot of these big farms look at is can I get my crop insured? Can I get a loan to help with the costs of doing it? That's that's the big problem right now, and Colorado is, you know, we have it legal. We've had it legal for years now, and nobody wants to really touch it. The big farmers, they have all the machinery and everything, but, you know, they can't get insurance for it. 
can't get a loan. So nobody's growing it really. It's really sad. That guy that who was in San Diego is growing it. Uh, he's got an eye on us. What, forget his name. He owned Marijuana Inc. Right. Well, we do have some like smaller scale farmers here in Colorado that do it. Uh, I know there's one that's been doing it for the sense it became legal and he's got 60 acres, but I, I just got done living on the uh, Eastern slope where they have like thousand acre, 2000 acre tracks of land. They'd love to do it, but no insurance, no loans. And you know, they won't touch it. It's really sad. Supposedly yeah. with all the hail they get on the Eastern slope. Right, well, exactly. You, Without the insurance, you're you know you're dead in the water. You know. Yeah, those other companies have got their teeth in that. You know, uh, going on about KPAC and living with Pa out there. You know, every morning we go to a little uh, country rest, a little restaurant, and uh, I would listen, and they were literally the Monsanto reps, and they're the young kids out of college, and. Uh, Telling these guys that uh, you know there were old farms that were you know basically infected by Monsanto and uh, you know Bill, don't worry about it. You know we'll cover this years on us. And you know you take you and the missus down to Aruba. You know we're by, buy yourself a couple of sleds. You have yourself a good time, and we'll catch up with you in the fall. And, and these guys were you know really just you know running the farm but uh you know monsanto was the was the real uh you know the monster that was taken over and uh those farms are uh again you're competing with those guys at, at such a blistering level that they know they'll lose and um you know that crop speaks for itself and 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 you take the insurance and the liability goes up and uh boom they're out of the you know they fold they're not in they're not interested Exactly. I saw it. I mean, I saw it every morning. I just, I almost wanted to punch these little kids in the head, these, you know, sales guys. And you could tell that they were making way too much money for their, for their, for their age. And, uh, yeah, they couldn't do anything wrong. And I'm thinking, God, that's, a, that's an easy gig. And me and the old man were eating breakfast. And I'm like, Pa, do you hear that shit? And they, God damn it, Michael, don't do it. Don't say nothing. I said, like, oh, man. I said, wow. You know, and, you know, just romancing and yeah, anyway, uh, but yeah, it's, they, they make it not possible. You know, they make it, right. they make it less desirable. They, they make it so the that- The only one that I've seen, I was, I was going to say, the only one that I've seen that is successful and has been successful is the Naval Reserve of hemp that they grow in Nebraska. That's behind, it's like a thousand acre track and- you know, they grow a certain amount here on our soil instead of getting it from the Philippines for naval rope and on and on yeah. for military use. Yeah, and that's yeah. the only one. Right. For sure. for sure. Absolutely. Well, the, the, uh, the, depart the head of the Department of Agriculture in South Carolina, his name is Hugh Weathers. And he's been a proponent of legalizing marijuana for years in order to increase the tax base and you know we have a 10 month grow season here pretty much and uh i would say that this might succeed in south carolina uh they've been trying to do this for a long long time but you know it's a very it's a republican conservative state so most of those kind of ideas you know as anything uh, but but we did have a they, they get squashed but we did have the we had a we had something that happened here that generally never happens anywhere. A few years ago, <clears throat> when CBD oil was legalized practically overnight, and I'm talking overnight, like two or three or four days, a family was gonna it was made public and became a national story about a family leaving South Carolina and leaving their home because their daughter had epilepsy and they were going to move to Colorado, and South Carolina approved the oil that was necessary to treat her in a week. In a week. So now we've got help. That's going to be real good for us down here. Uh, in South Carolina, it's kind of weird. Weird state, you know, I mean, you know, we've got some history here. Um, a little bit. We are either the first one to join or the last one to join. In the Revolutionary War, we were the holdout. 
in the in the Civil War, we were the first, you know, one the first one. So um, right, they were growing hemp there to supply the naval ships back then in those days, right? Well, and uh, well, you know, yeah. with your ten month Absolutely. growing season, that you're right, that'll probably be all that's needed for a lot of the, the bigger farms that have the machinery that can process the, the stocks and everything and get it to uh, market. There'll be a big incentive to them that, hey, I can I can pull four or five crops out of my field of this, you know. Right. Well, there's just so many barren farms anymore, and all you have to do is hemp is easy to grow. Hemp's pretty easy to grow. So it's uh, Yeah, it's like growing them, oats, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they just put it out there, you know, pretty much. And we got, you know, we did pretty good. Um, well, you know, we're zone um, eight, I think, zone eight, uh, as far as temperate climate and all. And uh, anyway, so it's good. It's a big move, though. That uh, And, I, you know, it's kind of fun. Well, I've been so, I have, I've had my nose down in, in all these, like, I love, the, you know, like Steve, it reminds me of old family stuff, even though he's much younger than me. He, oh, I, too many irons in fire. <laughs> I missed that news article, <laughs> but that is awesome. So I totally dig the hemp thing, and I know it bioremediates your soil and everything. But I gotta take this chance to tell you guys I gotta bounce out. Thank you so much for having me, Steve, and everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming on, dude. I want to get everybody's email and stay in touch, and all the viewers. Thank you for having me, and uh, love the show. I'm gonna stay watching and chat, guys. Hey, I'd love to thanks check so out your much. genetics sometimes, man. Absolutely, dude. Definitely want to stay in touch. Sounds dirty. Right. Have a blessed night, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Later, guys. Later. Be sure to check out his uh, website there in the description. It's tgagenetics.com. It's down there in the description. If you're looking for more info about him. Awesome. So there was many people in the open chat tonight like to give anything away, was there? A uh, couple. Well, no, there was. We just we just forgot about that. We'll we'll, we'll still do that. <laughs> I'll get the I'll get the info from him, and we'll, maybe we'll do it next. But uh, can, uh, can, uh, can, uh, do you have a direct line with Mike over there? With who? Mike, uh, who, our guest. Yeah. Yeah. Michael. Me. Mike, anyone, yeah, like Michael. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael. Not. Yeah. Michael. Anyone that's on the show. Uh, um, yeah. You want me to give it to you? No, 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 no. We, he was asking me if I had a connect for the guy that just left. Did um, you read my message to you, Steve, about about Mike, Michael? Oh yeah. Yeah, we yeah. Can't, is that something for later? Um, yeah, we'll do that in a couple. We we'll do. We kind of do that stuff at the end. Oh no! So okay, I don't. I'm not sure if we got the same. No, I'm talking about the gift. I'm confused. All right. I'll have to look. Uh, all right. I tell you what. Let me tell you again. All right. I'll tell you what. Sorry. Don't <laughs> Once again, we're having a uh, we're having a moment. That's all good. It's they my happen on the show all the time. <laughs> it's a stoner show. We teach things. Yeah, it's so um, I'm going to be starting my uh, video series on nutrients and additives and ingredients that you see in your stuff. Someone's breathing into their mic. There we go. Um, yeah, nutrient additives and minerals and you know, kind of on a one by one basis. I think um, people will get more info out of it that way. Um, and it'll be more beneficial be able to cover stuff a little bit more in the way that I want to cover it. So I think that'll be a cool series to put out there um, and help everyone learn uh, how to uh, manage these different things and things to, you know, we'll cover a lot of stuff that you should not use too, you know. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if I want to rotate it, um, how I want to rotate that. But I'm hoping to have the first video out uh, tomorrow. Um, uh, we'll see how it goes. So. Okay, so I sent you a message. <laughs> I brought this okay. up earlier. Huh? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, did you guys have anything else you guys wanted to talk about? If not, we'll, we'll wrap things up. 
Yeah, I probably gotta move because uh, move on because I'm in my buddy's apartment and uh, using his Wi-Fi. He's probably <laughs> tired of me. Okay. And her phone, my buddy's wife's phone. So you know, it's time to go. Okay. Well, I very much appreciate you having me on and having you talk about your your stuff. Um, and uh, uh, it'll be great to um, to have you on again sometime. For sure, I'll get that uh, Apple thing. Uh, that's to jam me before, so I'll get on that and uh, be a little more accessible in the future. I uh, apologize for not being a, a higher degree of readiness, but um, anyway, that's the real world. And uh, so long from the canyon in La Costa. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. See you next time, I hope. Yep, thanks.